Springwood. This meeting is being broadcast live and will be replayed on Channel 77 throughout the week. Adequate notice of this business meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Law, Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, setting forth the time, date, place, and purpose of this business meeting by Consent Agenda Resolution 2018-14, adopted January 1, 2018, through a legal notice published in the Suburban Trends issue of January 7, 2018, and through notices emailed to the following named newspapers and posted on the bulletin board at Borough Hall on January 3, 2018, the Suburban Trends and the Bergen Record. Uh, please silence all electronic devices during the meeting. Uh, Nicole, roll call, please. Council Members Bolton. Here. Mr. Bolton is joining us by phone today. Um, Council Member Peretti. Here. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Here. Council Member Noonan. Here. O'Keefe. Here. And Mayor Spear. Here. Also present, Borough Manager, Director, Department of Public Works, Scott Heck, Acting Municipal Clerk, Nicole Langenmeyer, and Borough Attorney, Richard Klimak. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving to our agenda, uh, there being no proclamations or presentations this evening, uh, we go forward into approval of minutes. Nicole, what do you have? We have special meeting October 9th while we're present. Uh, do we have a motion uh, approving the minutes, Mr. Martucci? Second. Mr. Noonan, any discussion? Roll call, please, on approving the business the meeting uh, meeting minutes of October 9th, 2018, special meeting, all present. Council, thank you. Council Member Bolton. Yes. Ferretti. Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Yes. Council Member Noonan. Yes. O'Keefe. Yes. And Mayor Spear. Yes. <coughs> then we have the business and executive session meeting on October 16th. While we're present. So moved. Second. Mr. Noonan, Mr. Ferretti. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Council Members Bolton. Councilman Bolton? Yes. Uh, is, that a, is that a yes vote on the meeting minutes from October 16? Correct. It is a yes vote. Thank you, sir. Council Member Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Member Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, Council Member, are you, are you hearing us okay here? Do you want to turn us up? I'm, I'm hearing quite fine. That's the oh, thing okay. Uh, ne next on our agenda is the general public comment portion. Uh, at this time, anyone wishing to address the uh, mayor and council can come forward to the microphone, uh, state your name and address for the record, uh, try to keep your comments brief and non-repetitive. Uh, and this is generally for items that are not on the agenda. If your item that you wish to speak on is on the agenda, please save it for that, uh, for that time and, uh, uh, during the meeting. Tom McAllen, 32 Judith Ann Drive. Uh, Greenwood. Um, just a quick statement about the storm a couple weeks ago. Uh, I happened to be in New York trying to get home. It took me nine hours. Um, I must say the roads were horrendous throughout the state of New Jersey. As I came over the top of the hill here in Ringwood, over on Slitsburg Road, um, as soon as I hit New Jersey, uh, county roads, Ringwood roads, we're really in great shape. I'd really like to send a shout out to both our DPW and the county DPW because the rest of the state was horrendous. The roads here were really in good shape. So just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Thomas Conway, 19 West Circle. Just want to talk real quick about the uh, Ringwood Mines groundwater report. I don't know if uh, 
council has a chance to review it or not. It's exactly what I've been saying for the last three years. The uh, EPA came in, they looked at the groundwater. It's a lot to go through. I haven't finished all the analysis, but this line stands out. Under existing conditions, there is no significant human health or ecological risk associated with groundwater or surface water at the site and no risk of migration to any downgradient receptor, including the Wanakee Reservoir or the borough public water supply wells. That's good news for the town uh, in general. I don't believe there is a threat to our water. It's bad news for the residents. Why the town's been fighting over a pile of dirt. The EPA's come in, they've shut down anything, anything that we can do to address the groundwater. They're gonna put a cap on the air shaft which has the worst amount of pollution and they're gonna pull stakes and get out of town. The best we can hope for at this point is remove a pile of dirt that has 10,000 tons, not 100,000 tons of uh, toxic stuff in it. So um, the groundwater report, for anyone concerned with the Superfund site, it should be considered a travesty of justice. Um, in the groundwater report, they talk about their 30 years of data. They're so proud of their 30 years of data, they're monitoring wells. Most of that report is centered on 1,4-dioxane, an element that, or a chemical that this council found, and the EPA has only looked at for three years. So they talk about their 30 years of looking at it, but they've been blind to one chemical in there. That chemical, after 50 years in the site, was discovered three years ago on site. You got to wonder, are there other chemicals in there? Is the EPA missing something? So, I mean, I've been saying it for three years. We can continue to fight over a pile of dirt, or we can actually look at the real problem. That's 280 million gallons of water under there that's polluted. Every time they do a reading down the air shaft, they say it gets worse as you go down. They only go down 10% of the depth of the mines. There's water in there. The report says that the water slowly moves up. There's no guarantee that that doesn't change. I, I think it's pretty safe to assume it won't, but there's no guarantee. So um, at some point, I, I just hope that two sides in the town can come together and actually look at the root problem, which is the water in the mines. That pile of dirt of O'Connor is not killing anyone. It'd be nice to make it a flowery field with uh, solar panels or something, but that's not the problem. If there's a health risk up there, it's from the mine water. And we're now, it seems like we're now just ready to ignore the mine water. It's completely frustrating. We need to stop talking about the pile of dirt and actually address the real problem. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Tall. 24 High Point Lane. You started early, didn't you? <laughs> so um, I just came on the, in on the tail end of the last Mr. Conway. So it's not really a pile of dirt, the O'Connor landfill. It's a pile of dirt that is intermingled with toxic waste. They might be small granules of waste but it's all in there. The EPA has said that it's 106,000 tons of toxic soil. Uh, the people that live on the site don't want it there. They're sick, it's contaminated, and it can't be touched. I agree with Mr. Conway, the water in the mines and in the shaft are highly contaminated. All the wells at the Superfund site have either trace levels of contaminants or exceedances. All of them, every single one, there's over 70 wells. So, but uh, for him to discount the O'Connor landfill, I, I disagree with him. I agree with him on the mines, definitely a huge problem. Um, but the O'Connor landfill should be cleaned up the borough should revert to excavation 5A. The EPA has said recently that at any time they'll revert to 5A if the borough changes its mind. I would hope that many of the residents in Ringwood would notify the EPA, the NJDEP, the Highlands <coughs> Council, and let them know that we do not want 100,000 tons of toxic waste buried and capped in Ringwood. It just does not make one bit of sense. In fact, we live in a watershed community and it's contraindicated. And again, the people that live on the site want it out of there. 
Thank you. Uh, my name is Ned Clawson here in Ringwood from Walker Drive. Uh, hi. Um, I have uh, another, this is a very important comments that were just made, but I have another um, thing that I wanted to bring up for some time. I brought it up with the, the government here in the state of New Jersey. What can you all do as administrators in the town of Ringwood to help keep the taxes down or even lower them? The property taxes, of course, in the state of New Jersey are the worst in all the country. I've done the statistics, been in touch with people in California and also in New York. And um, I've never seen anything uh, get constantly, I've monitored and looked at it for 40 years, because for 40 years there's been one party system in the state of New Jersey. The Democrats have controlled the state of New Jersey. That should never happen in a democracy, but unfortunately most people are oblivious to it and let it go on and on. They have brought the state into enormous debt. Uh, but uh, every municipality has a role in this, in how to keep taxes down and not let them go up, especially as people are senior citizens. And there's nothing to look boring about it or, or indifferent about it because then you, you are a contributor to the problem. And I think that uh, you need to uh, address this uh, and, and communicate this in a, a fashion that the uh, people will have some relief here as it, they should throughout the county and throughout the state. It's an important role you pay because, play because you're uh, really our servants. You, know, you are put in office by the people as everybody else is in this state. And unfortunately, uh, people in the state assembly, state government, of all sorts take advantage. They take our money, all our tax money, and all the people that are retired to pay the taxes to support the, every one of you people who may be drawing a salary in the state of New Jersey at the expense of the taxpayers. So paying, they get less benefits than the government people. Uh, the government people should have to pay for their own uh, health care just like uh, the normal citizens. I'm saying this tonight, and I hope it's recorded on the television, because you're part of it, and it goes all the way up, and it goes all the way down in the uh, of government. And the poor people are just victims of this, and often have never risen up to do anything about it. And the state is in serious jeopardy for going forward. What will happen? Thank you. Robin Kennedy, 310 Lakeview Avenue. I, I had nothing to say until then. Um, blaming the Democrats. Let's see, we're all going to get really <coughs> royally screwed this year. Thank you, President Trump. Um, I guess we forgot about Chris Christie for eight years. We forgot about Christine Todd Whitman. The county went back and forth, Republican, Democrat. This town has been majority Republican most of the time. So please, facts matter. We had a Republican governor for the last eight years. We have a Republican president who just took away our major deductions. New Jersey's gonna get killed more than any other state in the nation. Please don't blame the Democrats for this. The Democrat Senate uh, state is totally <laughs> <laughs> Peter Sando, 24 High Point Lane. I just wanna to add to that discussion that um, the last time the Democrats were in control of this council, they uh, did away with the council members getting health insurance, which uh, under Republican rule, it was in place. And unless it's been changed back again, I think it still is the same. And I think that's a good thing. I'll second. Roll call on closing public, please. 
Council Members Bolton? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. And Mayor Spear? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Next on our agenda, old business, public hearing uh, and final passage of ordinance. Councilor? Yes, uh, uh, this is uh, Ordinance 2813. A motion to read by title, please. So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call to read by title. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Um, Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay, an ordinance amended <clears throat> Chapter 40, which is entitled Zoning Regulations of the Revised General Ordinance of the Borough of Ringwood County of Passaic State in New Jersey, prohibiting marijuana cultivation, production, manufacture, and sale. Uh, this is the, uh, the public hearing, Mr. Mayor, the matter to be open uh, to the public. Um, uh, very good. The, uh, this matter is now open to the public. Uh, ordinance number 2018-13. Um, anyone wishing to speak, please come to the microphone. State your name and address uh, for the record, please, and please try to keep your comments uh, brief and non-repetitive. Tom McCallum, 32 Judith Ann Drive. Um, basically, I'm, I'm kind of neutral on this, I'll be honest with you. Um, I go either way, but I guess my first question to you is, those before you vote, do you really think your vote is going to change what the state's going to do one way or another? It's not. It's coming, guys. Either get on the bandwagon or you're going to lose. We got a lot of stores that are empty. We could help to maybe fill some of those stores. We have an industrial track that's completely removed from the rest of the town for the most part. It'd be ideal location for growing indoor cannabis in a secure environment. Both of which would help the tax base, which would dress Mr. Clawson to some extent is with his high taxes. <laughs> You're voting on an ordinance that we don't even know what it is yet because the state hasn't passed it. Why don't you at least wait until you see what the little caveats they may add on. Already they're tell, talking about 2% add on as a, uh, a local tax that you could add, which would help once again. <coughs> but for me, one of the worst things, and a couple of you out here are old enough to remember, when New York State had drinking at 18 and New Jersey at 21 and you had people driving from New Jersey to New York to drink. How many of you know somebody that died on that trip? How many people are going to die dri driving down to Patterson to buy this stuff or going up to West Milford? I don't know. Do you even want your kids going down to Patterson to drive this stuff? So all I'm saying is give some thoughts. There's some negatives to this. On the positive side, you're not stopping it, guys. Your vote isn't going to make the difference. Just give that some thought, please. Robin Kennedy, 310 Lakeview Avenue. Um, first of all, looking at the ordinance, when you guys had introduced it the first time, there was a discussion of recreational and medicinal, and this doesn't specify one way or the other, because I thought that there were members on the council that were backing off prohibiting medicinal so that you were going to make medicinal available because there were a lot of fairly eloquent people that knew way more than I knew about the situation at that meeting. Um, I know the gentleman from West Milford um, had suggested you all go look at a dispensary. I'm wondering how many of you actually toured that. So I'll echo what, what Mr. McGowan said. I, I think you're voting on something with really very little homework just as a knee-jerk reaction to the fact that it's a drug. But if it becomes, a, and I, I'm not firmly an opinion whether it should be legal or not, but it's go, if it's going to be, uh, again, 2%, Colorado is falling over themselves with all the money that they're making from, from marijuana. If it's going to be legal, my understanding is West Milford is already totally on board. They're going to have um, a cultivation facility. They're already in talks with somebody about that. That's right next door to us. Why are we turning our backs? on the one thing that we hear from you all the time. It's the taxes, it's about the taxes, it's about the taxes. 
you're going to have a legal way to bring revenue into town. It's not going to be allowed for children because the ordinance is going to prohibit it. So it's going to be no more available to children than alcohol is. Can kids get liquor now? You betcha. Can they get drugs now? Sure they can. So it's not going to make it any more easy. easy. I'm sorry it's going to be an enforcement issue for you guys. But it's already there. We're not going to make it any easier for kids to get something. It's still going to be, they have the doors, they're locked. You have to show the ID cards if it's like the other states that have it. It's not going to just be people on street corners selling drugs. So again, I would wait until you saw the finished product. But if you're not going to wait, I would wait to vote until you've done a little more homework on it and look into what this could actually do to benefit the town instead of having it every place else but here. Thank you. And again, medicinal. Don't outlaw medicinal. Paul Sullivan, excuse me guys, Paul Sullivan, 69 Lakeview Avenue. Thank you for letting me have this moment uh, to talk about this ordinance. It's an emotional issue for me, so I hope I keep it uh, clear and succinct. Uh, I was at the last meeting, and a couple of things were mentioned already. I was listening to our outstanding police chief uh, say things such as, it increases the traffic problems, it increases the budget for the police department, it does cause additional problems. So I want everybody in the council to consider that before they vote on this issue. Uh, and also, keep in mind, I don't know if the fellow who spoke, uh, who was a drug counselor spoke last time, he had tremendous uh, information about children. And people who have children and grandchildren should really think about this because people under the age of say 15, 16, I don't recall his exact number, but people are taking their children to daycare and taking them to swimming lessons should really think about this before they vote on it. Yes, it may be approved by the state. It may be approved by the county. But why do we want to prove it in Ringwood? So we're a little bit different. Let's keep it different. It was also mentioned that they might have to drive to West Milford and have an accident. So I guess what that person is saying is marijuana influences the person, causes them, mental, causes them problems driving, and they, uh, they're going to have a problem coming back from West Milford, they better get their drugs. And it is a drug, it's not just cannabis, whatever sweet name you may want to call it. But if you have children and grandchildren, and you're thinking about this, yes, they're gonna get it, but we don't need to get it in Ringwood. Let's keep it as clean as we can. I mean, the chief also mentioned the cost. It was mentioned that Colorado was falling over themselves on how to spend the money. From what I understand, and I haven't read all the information, that, um, it's costing them money, increased policing, and other issues such as drug rehabs, which marijuana is a stepping stone, a stepping drug. Now, I think before any of you vote on this tonight, I think it's wise, as was said earlier, they should read more information about it. But I think every one of you should attend open speaker, alcoholic anonymous meetings, and drug meetings before you vote on this just to get your information from people who, and there's a gentleman here last time, who talked about it. Alcohol is a stepping stone to harder drugs. Marijuana, in my opinion, is a stepping stone to marijuana, because I've heard men enough cases over my lifetime that these drugs increase and they cause additional problems. And marijuana is a stepping stone drug, as much as you may, want, may not want to believe it. I implore you to go to the meetings, especially if you have children, Listen to what happens to these drug addicts and how they developed Oxycontin, how they got on heroin. What did they start with? Pepsi Cola? You're going to find many of them started on marijuana. And it is a stepping stone drug. Thank you very much for listening to me. So before you vote, think about those items. Think about the psychologist that talked. Think about what the chief said because these are the people that studied it and have the information, <coughs> not just general public like myself. Thank you for listening to me. Thanks for sharing. I'm Ray Danziger. I am just retired as the student assistance coordinator for the Ringwood Public Schools, Lakeland and Wanaku for 31 years. Also still remaining our uh, alliance of Wanaku and Ringwood for Education and Awareness for Substance Abuse Prevention, AWARE ASAP Chair. I'm here primarily in the, t 
to convey to you so much in a short time of what I learned by listening to our kids, your kids, the kids that are still coming through our systems from last year working with some students at Ryerson who were vaping cannabis products, who were selling small quantities of you know, leafy marijuana through high school seniors, through uh, our previous uh, speaker mentioned what could happen. Some of us have been to way too many wakes and funerals of our 23, 24, 26 year olds who have progressed in a different form of use. We can't control necessarily how the vote's going to be in Trenton. Um, it's unclear right now. I urge you to vote how you can to pass this, to prohibit. I think it will make a difference no matter what West Milford does or other communities. It makes a difference here and you are taking a stand over my years. I can't tell you the number of students who said, I can't find any weed. Cops have made a lot of busts lately. It makes a difference locally because there are so many students who aren't going to drive to Patterson, who aren't going to get in touch with a dealer, who aren't going to put out money. They are not ready to be drug criminals in their mind, if a friend says you want a beer, that's different for students, for young people, than actually using marijuana and procuring it. The marijuana of today is not what it was even 10 or 15 years ago. I wasn't able to make the previous meeting, perhaps people shared about that. The potency has skyrocketed because of growing techniques, hybridization. And it's not just a stepping stone drug. It, it can be, it is also addictive. Yeah, we don't have completely hard numbers, but most people, number one, the people in rehab amongst under 21, the majority in the United States are there for marijuana dependency. I worked with a senior last year at Lakeland. He was recovering from his self-admitted marijuana addiction. He said he didn't drink, he would never touch other drugs. Weed to him was natural. Well, so many drugs are natural, they're grown um, different ways, so I never accept that argument, but it made sense for him. So. He got addicted. He said he could not remember his junior year. He had failed all his classes. He had, could not remember so many specifics because that's what it did to his brain. That may sound like an, an extreme. Some people will say, oh, it's not so addictive. It's not going to cause problems. I'd like to share with you just a little sequence of a different young man within the last couple of years. Uh, I think I started talking with him in October of that year and I said, so what impact does it have now that you've told me and, and just for those who don't know some of my work uh, or some of a student assistance counselor co coordinator's work, we have the responsibility, the privilege actually of talking confidentially with students in the school settings. Uh, protected by law confidentiality within boundaries. So students shared real information and perspectives. So he's, I asked him, as I usually would, uh, what does it do for you and what has it done to you? Uh, in a sense of what are the consequences now that he had told me he was using four or five times a week. He said, well, I'm fine. It really hasn't affected me that much. And I said, uh, let's go deeper. So we went deeper and he had started the previous summer 
once or twice a week with buddies. He was a member of the football team. He told me he had wanted to work out all summer to be really buff and prepared, but, well, he was more interested in getting high. Big consequence for that young man and perhaps his family and perhaps the team, et cetera, but right there. So I told him there's actually, a, you know, a term for that, so-called amotivational syndrome, common effect of marijuana use. What about his grades? Oh, yeah, well, just not <coughs> doing much. You got to graduate, right? Yeah, I got to pick it up. I got to pick it up. The, this is a smart kid. Just not doing it. How about family? I would just get in these arguments with my dad over nothing. Now, months later, after he had gotten clean, he said, this is so much better because I'm actually talking with my dad and we're not arguing. If that is not a real consequence, you know, I don't have to look at arrest records, so to speak. That is huge. All of us who are parents can well appreciate that. And grandparents. So we kept going along that. I said, how's your driving? Oh, I drive great when I'm high. I said, yeah, you probably think you do. He said, well, yeah. I said, well, there's a pretty well-known effect of marijuana that it f narrows your focus. So yeah, you're sitting there at the red light going, I got this. Uh, it's red, I'm under control, I'm ready for the green, it's gonna go. I said, but you're so narrowly focused, it affects your peripheral vision and you're not seeing that seventh grader coming through the stop sign on his bicycle off the side street. He said, yeah, I, I never realized, I never, yeah. Real impacts, and do I think if it's in West Milford that some kids may get it from there? Yeah, but a lot more won't. And if it's not in Ringwood, a lot more will not experience these problems. Thank you. Steve Michelin, 29 Wellback Terrace in Ringwood, New Jersey. Um, first off, I would like the council to again abolish the three-minute rule. Obviously, it's a farce. I see it, I see it in all the council meetings, and I, my fear is that you will someday try to use that against someone that has something to say that you disagree with. So I'm not sure why you keep it on the agenda, and every year, every January, it gets reinstituted. Re re Please abolish it. Second, uh, I'm not going to talk about the evils or the benefits, potential benefits of marijuana. My drug of choice actually is chocolate. Love yeah. chocolate cake, <laughs> Hershey bars, the dark chocolate. <laughs> but someone made a point about the financial aspect. Uh, I know the mayor has himself opined about taxes in the, in the town. Our deputy mayor, too, has talked about taxes. Why would we want to close off an avenue that doesn't even exist yet, but might be a possibility by, and this ordinance, if I'm reading the title correctly, is all about the production and manufacture, not about the use or the consumption. There are already laws on the books for that. So I'm not sure why you're thinking about doing this if there's even the remote chance that maybe we can get some tax revenue on this. Um, maybe it's the thought that, oh, if we pass this, uh, no kid will ever get high again. God bless if it works that way. I don't think it will, but I think this is about production and manufacturing you're talking about. Um, I would encourage you to hold off passing an ordinance you know, quickly tonight. I don't think it's gonna have an impact and better to have more information Later on, there's no need to do this right now. Thank you very much. Hi there. I'm Jim Martin, Marsha Road. Um, I have to echo a couple of things that other people have already said that I do urge you to hold back on this until you know more. Knowledge is power. 
you haven't done a deep dive into this from what I've learned so far. This has been a very successful enterprise and a very well-regulated enterprise in other parts of the country. When you look at the states like Colorado, California, Oregon, the world didn't end. They thoughtfully manage this, and it's been rolled out very successfully. Look at statistics. Look at what your teenage level of usage has been in these legalized states. The scare stories, very well done. Knowledge is power. Don't go for them. You already have 11 states in this country that have legalized. It's very likely New Jersey is to follow. Before categorically dismissing a very significant revenue stream in a town that, God, we are taxed to death. My taxes have doubled since I moved here. How else are we going to stem the tide of that? We have no rateables. The Highlands Act prohibits us from doing a lot of things. We have an ever-growing pension liability that's coming down the road for <coughs> municipal employees. We have to think forward, not backwards. Knowledge is power. Many of the stories that you just heard from two other folks here are dated thinking that are not provable. Go for something that's provable. Look at where you've had successful implementations of these laws. Also look at what this town has to offer to an industry like that. Even if you decide to say no cultivation, no selling, you're not going to stop this train. Your neighbor right next door has already said we're embracing this. New York State's not too far behind. You're literally at a confluence of two places that are already going to have it. Somebody referenced the blood border that we had during the drinking age years. You'll have the same dynamic. You already have marijuana in your town. Sorry, but makes your job easier, actually, to have a well-regulated industry rather than a clandestine dark industry. Study traffic fatalities in these states. Knowledge is power. Research these things before you make a decision that is going to have a long-term impact <laughs> on this town. Most of all, a long-term impact on our taxes. Um, where else are we going to find revenue at this point? You know, one of the everybody talks in this town: pensions, Superfund sites. It's all money going out, not money coming in. This is a way to bring money into this town, and to do it in a highly regulated way. Let the state act first, then respond. Knowledge is power in this case. Thank you for your time. Brandon Gray, 424 Lakeview Ave. Uh, whenever I come to these meetings, I'm, I'm very encouraged by everyone that, that comes. Um, it means a lot that uh, people feel passionately about this and that uh, there's a place where we can come and everyone can speak their part uh, on these important issues that affect everybody in, in our town. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to get up here. I don't like doing it, that's why I write it down because I will completely blank if there's not so. People that don't have anything, I don't know how you do it. Um, I've attended a few council meetings at which this ordinance has been discussed. And while I've heard many people, tonight included, make really passionate arguments as to why marijuana should not be legalized, uh, I haven't heard as many defending the need for this particular ordinance which we're discussing tonight. I am not here to discuss whether or not I think cannabis should be legalized or not. That's a different debate for a different forum. There was meetings yesterday in Trenton that would be perfect for that, and I'm sure there'll be meetings in the future that are the place to, to make your arguments against legalization. I want to focus instead on the proposed ordinance and how Ringwood proceeds if and when cannabis is legalized in New Jersey. I understand the desire to keep marijuana out of our town, but this ordinance isn't going to accomplish that. Cannabis will be here, it is here, regardless of whether or not the ordinance is enacted. With that in mind, I ask you, what do you hope to accomplish with this ordinance? It, um, if we can agree that it won't keep cannabis out of Ringwood, what does it accomplish? It sends a message, sure, uh, no doubt about that. Um, I think most people get what the message is. Um, but I ask you, like, what is that message really? Um, to me, the biggest message it sends is that we're failing to look at the future. If you look at U.S. public opinion, over the past few decades, people's attitudes towards uh, marijuana and legalization have, have greatly changed. As recently as 1990, only 
of people believed marijuana should be legalized. You fast forward 28 years to the present and 62% of people now believe it should be legalized. That number has risen consistently over that time period. Wouldn't it be logical to assume that that number is going to continue to climb? And once it's legalized, as other states have already done, people's attitudes are likely to change even more. Uh, I'd say it's safe to assume that future generations, like my children, will view marijuana pro prohibition similar to the way we view the pro prohibition of alcohol. They'll never understand uh, why it was illegal in the first place. Uh, honestly, I think attitudes in Ringwood uh, have already ch uh, largely changed. Late last year when, when uh, the state started discussing legalization, uh, I posted a poll, a very informal poll on Facebook on a group with you know, three, 4,000 members um, asking uh, if people would be in favor or opposed to uh, Ringwood allowing cannabis to be sold and or produced within the borough. Uh, it got over 300 responses, and I know some people may be shaking their head that that's um, not very many, but I mean, that is how sampling, you know, that's how polling works, it's sampling. Um, of the over 300 responses, 66% voted yes, that they would be in favor of the borough either selling or producing uh, cannabis. 27% voted no, 20% said they were unsure at the time. Um, and like I said, I know, it's a Facebook poll, um, but what's interesting is that a Quinnipiac poll, which is a, a legitimate polling, uh, not my Facebook polling, uh, from earlier this year found that 63% of Americans, like I said earlier, are in favor of legalization. Uh, just recently, uh, Rutgers Eagleton found that 64% of New Jerseyans said that they would, quote, would not be bothered if a store selling marijuana opened in their town. So while my Facebook poll is far, far, far from scientific, it does closely resemble what's going on statewide and nationwide, so I tend to think that it could be fairly accurate. Um, I pulled 3% higher than, than both of those. Um, at previous meetings, I've also heard people um, cite the 40 plus New Jersey towns uh, that have passed similar bans. So what? Uh, I, I can't be the only person who was asked uh, by their mom what feels like 300 times in their childhood, if all your friends jumped off a bridge, would you follow them? She also probably told me a million times, which again, everyone in here, don't drink and don't do drugs, and that didn't work either. Um, uh, I, I don't think we have to be followers here. I think this is an opportunity for us to be leaders. Um, I've heard the majority of uh, sitting council people, as well as some former council people, decry the Highlands Act for what they deem to be uh, a short-sightedness um, and not, not looking to the future enough and protecting Ringwood. Uh, how is this any different? Isn't this ordinance short-sighted? Uh, critics also blame the Highlands Act for hamper hampering our ability for economic growth. Again, isn't this ordinance doing the same thing? Uh, I ask you to look into the future instead of the past. Um, how long will it take for, for marijuana to be just as accepted as alcohol is in our society? Five years, 10 years? It's not gonna be very long. Um, once that happens, we'll simply be missing out on the financial opportunities afforded by cannabis. Um, as discussed, uh, some of those financial opportunities, um, the most recent bill, which hasn't been passed, which is one reason I think we should wait, uh, Section 18 stipulates, quote, a local governmental entity where a cannabis establishment is located may assess and collect an excise tax, note, not a sales tax, of 2% upon cannabis or cannabis products sold or otherwise transferred by that establishment which shall be deposited into the treasury of the local governmental entity. I know some of you don't trust government at the state or county level, but it will be coming directly to us, so there, there's no need for that fear. Um, so uh, while I can understand not wanting a dispensary in town, and, and I would be open to that, I, I cannot understand the resistance to other classes of cannabis establishments. Uh, I attended the most recent planning board hearing at which this ordinance was discussed, and I understand that our zoning currently only allows agricultural businesses to exist in residential zones, but to me that doesn't, it's not really relevant because nobody here has land large enough to, to have a farm really, um, and also if, if you live in Ringwood, which everyone I think in this room does, and you've ever tried to dig even one hole, it's not easy, it's a lot of rocks. Um, however, as people have mentioned in the industrial park, that would be the perfect uh, place 
and we have vacancies for uh, um, you know growing facility. You can have a hydroponic. Uh, you can have a production facility that that takes the raw cannabis and turns it into products that will be sold. So at no point will anybody be buying or selling cannabis within within the town. Um, that is an option, and I, and I think that addresses some of the residents' concerns. Uh, again, it'll be here anyway. Um, another interesting benefit uh, is, is a possible increase in property values. I'm sure they're behind me. There's people rolling their eyes. Um, but according to research uh, published earlier this year in July of uh, an issue of Economic Inquiry, which is a journal, uh, they found that Colorado towns that legalized the retail sales of, of marijuana saw an increase in housing values by about 6% or an average of $15,600 per house. So to whoever who's asked, and I've heard it at other uh, meetings, who in their right mind would want to move to a town with a dispensary, the answer would be quite a few, apparently. Uh, to me, the benefits greatly outweigh the risks, especially if the ordinance were rewritten to apply strictly to the retail sale of cannabis, which Bill S-2703, which is the, the most recent bill, uh, stipulates would be within our rights. Uh, as per Section 19 in there, uh, it says local government entity regulations or ordinance, one, govern the time, location, manner, and number of cannabis establishments, and two, a local governmental entity may prohibit the operation of any one or more classes of cannabis establishment within the jurisdiction of the local governmental, governmental entity through the enactment of any or of an ordinance and this prohibiting ordinance shall apply throughout the local governmental entity. So again, this ordinance could be rewritten to strike retail, which I think addresses many of the people's concerns is that they don't want a dispensary in town. So at least that way we're still making, taking advantage of the 2% excise tax uh, through production, cultivation, testing even. Um, my preference would be for the ordinance to be scrapped altogether, um, however, I'm all for compromise. Uh, I know that's a forgotten word in, in today's political landscape, but I, like I said, I think rewriting the ordinance um, could be a, a good decision. Um, you know, and lastly, you know, I, I was at, like I said, I was at the last planning board meeting. Um, you know, Mayor Spear had said that he was a, a libertarian, um, which is great. Um, you know, but this this ordinance feels so at odds with with that mindset. Uh, you know, in, in short, you know, I, I went on their website today, um, and it says minimum government, maximum freedom. Um, so I ask you, Mayor Spear, does this ordinance feel like minimum government and maximum freedom to you? Because it sure doesn't to me. And uh, I think that for for the Republicans sitting here, small business, fi fiscal responsibility, let's do it. Thank you. Chuck Forbes, 42 Ricker Drive. Uh, I agree with Mr. McCallum about the uh, impact on vacancies <coughs> in the stores, but I have a question for Mr. Klimak, and maybe he could address it or research it. Uh, it seems to me, <coughs> that I read that there's a thing in New Jersey called the Right to Farm Act, and uh, any person who has an appropriate sized piece of land is entitled to use that to supersede local ordinances. Uh, so it would be my question to you, sir. Uh, would this ordinance comply with that? And if, if it doesn't, then uh, perhaps uh, it needs to be restructured somehow. Hi, Melissa Heck, 27 Wimbeam Loop. I'm all for rateables here in Ringwood, and once I retire, I would really like to be able to stay in Ringwood. Um, I understand that we're under the Highlands Act, which prohibits building here in Ringwood on any new property. Um, my question is, if all the buildings in Ringwood um, are currently occupied in our industrial park, and the taxes, and we're receiving taxes on them, um, how can passing this ordinance bring in more rateables if we can't build anything? Um, that's my question to you. And is, is Ringwood receiving any monies from the Highlands Act? Um, also, I just did a little research too. After five years in Colorado, the homeless rates are the highest in the country. Drug violations in K-12 schools have increased 45%. 
and 71% in the high schools. So I also work with Ray Danzinger with AWARE and um, we are concerned for our youth and our community. Thank you. All right, um, Daniel Milano uh, from Cupsaw Drive. Uh, basically on the ordinance at hand, uh, my preference would be that you delay this table it, check out some dispensaries, check out some grow places. Uh, I can talk to my dispensary, see if we can arrange something. Uh, this way you can get some more information. Everyone pretty much covered <laughs> almost everything I was going to say. Uh, one thing though, a lot of people are mentioning high school and K-12 to use. The law is for 21 and up, just like alcohol, including the federal bill I've been working on, H.R. 6043. <laughs> That also stipulates federally, should it become legal on the federal standpoint, it is 21 and up. Minors getting it, that's going to be illegal just like it is now, just like they get it now. When I was in high school in this town, finding marijuana was not exactly a difficult thing. You just walked around the corner away from the principal and somebody had it. Um, if this ordinance is intended to be proceeded with and you guys are insistent on going through, I only have one issue with it and it comes down to medicinal. Uh, your original one that you had presented, you had stipulated both. You amended it in the essence where you remove recreational medicinal. On this particular one, under section one, where you stipulate, you know, uh, the ban of marijuana cultivation facilities, et cetera, my only request is that you put in front of the word marijuana recreational. So this way medicinal still has a pathway within this town. I say this because the reason why I'm working on it federally is that our hopes are to get it to the point where I can get my medicinal marijuana from CVS. For me, it got me off Xanax, it got me off painkillers, it got me off my seizure meds, all of which were causing incredible side effects that were problematic. And anyone that knows drugs and addiction should know Xanax is a horrible thing to be on for more than even a couple of weeks. And thanks to the brain injury and blood thinners, it was my only option. Uh, and the seizure meds, uh, if you want to talk about weight gain, I had to go on them because I want a notification, say if you off the marijuana, I gained 30 pounds in a matter of a week going on my seizure meds. So um, ideally, i, I just <coughs> like to, if you insist on this, amend it to make sure it's curtailed, it's focused specifically at recreational. All right. I guess you guys know what side I'm on. <laughs> I'm Chief Joe Walker from the Ringwood Police Department. Uh, first of all, I want to clear up any misconceptions that we've had. I've seen some posts on Facebook, and I'll tell the audience and everyone at TV, no member of this council or the mayor or the borough manager had nothing to do with this proposal. It was mine. And the reason why it's mine is as your chief, the chief of this uh, town, public safety is my utmost concern. Morality and... and and anything else regarding illegal activity. Now, everybody says it's going to be legal. Federally, it's a Schedule I drug. Opioids are Schedule II drugs. So under the federal guidelines, this is more strictly controlled under, under federal law than the opioids are. And look where the opioids are getting us. All right? We had a lot of issues discussed tonight. <clears throat> Um, we have issues regarding, and uh, there's a lot of incorrect information here. First of all, I can go with the, the case by case. The fatal accidents in Colorado more than doubled since marijuana has been legal. I don't know where they're getting their information from. This whole packet here, I made copies for each council person. So they had more than ample time to look at it and research. There's reports from the Colorado Police Chiefs Association among, among other places. It's not something I pulled out of the hat. Everyone had this. So it's not like they're going blind and looking at this ordinance because that's not the case. The Passaic County Police Chiefs Association, which I'm the president, the State Police Chiefs Association, the International Police Chiefs Association, the Board of School Administrators, School Drug Alliance Coordinators, Drug Counselors, all are opposed. All are opposed. These are people you put your faith in for your kids, for your safety. They're saying don't do it. We see as police officers things that the public don't see or read about. Things about overdoses. 
there's probably so everybody on this council had exposure to a marijuana incident in her family at one time or another. Guaranteed. We see these things. You don't see it on TV. You don't read about it in the paper. We're there. These officers are here on their own time because they know the importance of this ordinance because of what it's going to do to this community. You're going to have the traffic coming in. The uh, black market for marijuana in Colorado has increased tremendously because the people can get it in the black market. They don't have to pay the taxes. The monetary gain, 2%. How much pot do they got to sell to get 2% to make it worthwhile to offset the, uh, the police? I mean, it's ridiculous to think it's going to be a moneymaker for this town. You want to attract ratables? A family coming into town? They're going to come in and have a pot store next to 7-Eleven or Dairy Queen? You're going to attract family members when they legalize drugs, which is what you're talking about. The family members aren't going to come here. That's why all the towns, mainly the shore towns, passed ordinances first because they were concerned about the tourism impact. People are not going to go down there and be on a boardwalk when people go in stone walking down a boardwalk smoking marijuana. It's a fact. And of those 42 towns that uh, voted 40 ordinance, there was not one town where the ordinance was proposed that it didn't pass. Not one. I don't know if we want to be the first one. But they're talking about li locals. Oakland passed it. Mawa passed it. Hawthorne. Franklin Lakes. Every town around here. And West Milford's, it's not a sure thing. They want to put, West Milford, they want to put a farm right next to Camp Hope where we have kids. Now, how, how sensible is that? So what, what I'm just saying is this. It's my job to keep town safe. I expect you had enough faith in me to make me chief of police. You have to understand that I'm dealing from a different perspective than the people that use it recreationally. I see the impact. I've worked with Dr. Danzer for 30 years, right, right? We've seen a lot of, lot of kids. I've had counselors come in with marijuana that they took from a kid. I have personally taken kids to counselors. So we need to protect our children because I know that like, they get it now. We had kids in grammar school. We get it. But it's going to be more readily available if we have dispensaries in this town. It's, it's a fact of life. Why would you want to put a kid in that position to have more exposure to something? It's just a dangerous, dangerous situation. It'll be a dangerous on the road. We still have no test to test for DWI regarding marijuana. We still have no test. And if people are going to come up here, the drug dealers from Patterson, they're not going to stay in Patterson. They're going to come up by the dispensaries. People are going in, they'll be like ticket scalpers. You know, the ticket scalpers are out in front of the stadium selling tickets cheaper. You're going to go in there and pay $50 for a dime bag and they'll sell it for 30 outside. What are, what are these people going to do? That's the point. The tax, the tax revenue is not there. Uh, Colorado police chief in Denver, I believe it was Denver, had to go to the state to get more funding for his police force. The money they take, they don't tell you what the money's coming out. So I'm just saying, we see things, we know things. 42 years I've been doing this. I see things and know things. More than you people know. It's not just a spot to go get high, which is the only reason to have recreational marijuana. It's to get high. That's it. So you want us to sanction people to go to get high. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense to me as a law enforcement officer. It doesn't make sense to me. And the revenue, it's going to scare people away. People are going to, first of all, if it gets voted down, it'll be all over the newspaper. And people are going to say, I'm not going to move there. They want legalized marijuana. The towns that don't are going to flourish because they know that they're being protected. People want it legalized, that's fine. You don't have to sell it here. We can control what businesses come in here. I could say, you know what, somebody wants to open up a go-go bar at Skyline Drive. I'll bet you everybody in here would be complaining about it. It's legal, but you don't want it. But it's legal. So you got to think about that. That's, uh, if anybody has any questions, please, you could call me. 
This research I gave to every councilman. I hope everybody had a chance to look at it. It was very detailed. It wasn't like they're just getting this piece of paper that the ordinance is on. They had a chance to do research. But you keep on kicking the can down the road. You have 180 days from when it's legal to pass an ordinance. And everything gets to keep on kicking down the road. I'd rather be proactive or reactive. It's like it's too late to buy a fire truck after a house burns down. You need the fire truck before. This is our fire truck right here. And we need it. So thank you for your time. Jeanette Davison, 165 Lakeview Ave. I'm the public health nurse for Ringwood, and I spoke several times um, for every meeting that we've had. I, too, provided all of you with information about this in regards to the health of our children and just people in general. Um, the first thing I would like to say is to the person who said that Ray Danziger had scare tactics. I find that offensive. He had 31 years in this business. He just retired and actually he knows a lot about kids and how influenced they are by how things are commercialized. I spoke to you last time about the vaping epidemic and it is an epidemic and in 10 years, actually 15 years, 2003 was the first vaping device developed and in 15 years it's only just now that they're realizing that they're, the kids are being marketed and that they're taking off with this and they're doing it and they're making it smaller and smaller and they can hide it in their shirts and their backpacks and they're vaping in the schools and now they're able to put THC in that as well. So some of the kids are high at school. So um, I think the work that the Lakeland has been doing is valuable and I don't, I just want that to go on record that this isn't a scare tactic. These are children that we're talking about. I understand the medical marijuana issue I think it does help people, but we have six dispensaries in the state. We're looking to give six more licenses out. They had 146 applicants, and they're waiting. I don't know if they've awarded them yet. Yes, West Milford applied, Grow Right applied. That should be closer than Sea Caucus in Montclair. And I understand at a federal level, you're looking for it to be covered with insurance, and that's a different issue, but we, this is slow going. So that, that's one thing. And I really do feel strongly, I think that we, you need to really think about how, how they are commercializing this for kids and how we are, I feel, I understand that people don't want to pass an ordinance that, for a law that doesn't exist yet, but to put public health below profits is a terrible thing to do. Um, we, we really won't, I don't think, benefit financially as, um, Joe Walker has just said, we may not see any of that money because we'll be rolling it out to do other programs to counteract the effects that this is gonna have on our youth. So I think, I think you're on the right track if you pass this. I think we really, as a town, should make a statement to our younger people in our community and protect them. I think that you're delusional if you think that the kids aren't going to try this because their friends have more access to it. They, they go to parties, it'll be at parties. Right now, maybe there's only alcohol there. This is different. This is a drug that stays in your system for 30 days, which is why it's so hard to test. It's fat soluble. You can't tell if someone just did it or if they did it a week ago. And if they party all weekend, do you want these kids caring for your kids in daycare, taking care of your kids, your family members in the hospital? Lifeguards, counselors at the lake, are they gonna be on top of their game when they're watching your kids? These are 21 year olds for kids that'll be legal doing it. So it's, it's, it's not just about, um, I think really at a state level, I'd love to see all of you get involved in this as well and really try to speak to the governor and the rest of the people that are making policy on this to be very careful. That's all. And my comments to it, too. I think there's some very good comments. Uh, she made an excellent uh, uh, comments about it. This uh, young man here uh, with a beard, and uh, he uh, made some excellent points also from his perspective. However, after hearing our police chief 
and having the facts, uh, that is far more compelling uh, as anybody that might be asking you not to vote for this. That certainly, with those facts, are very compelling. I don't see how you could uh, walk away from that or, or uh, uh, not pay attention to it. You know, I, I'm going to just make a comment. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I know that guys I, that smoked marijuana and got killed because they, they really weren't in control of themselves. Now, I'm, this is out of hand here maybe a little bit, but I saw that in personal experience, the dumbness of it all. However, there's one thing I will say for medicinal purposes, I'm not against um, marijuana if it helps for medicinal purposes, but then that should be very controlled and, uh, and laid out properly about it. Uh, so those are my comments, but uh, very, uh, I was very taken by the professional information that was provided here by the police chief. I don't know how you can deny that, even though the, uh, some of the opinions on the other side were interesting. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tom Conway, 19 West Circle. Uh, I don't think the debate tonight is about whether or not we want my marijuana in town. Uh, I know, for one, I, I prefer not to see it. But I'm not really, really uh, ready to give up my rights and see our government put another restriction on our time. We're under the heavy yoke of the Highlands Act already. Do we really need to restrict business here? Uh, a lot of people came up with a good compromise where we just ban the sale of it, not the cultivation and the other things. Um, you know, we had some other points. It was a joke that uh, it starts with Pepsi. It probably does. Uh, sugar has the same effect on the brain as, as a lot of these drugs. They show it. Uh, I've seen it myself at the end of a birthday party where the kids bounce off the walls and then all cry on command. Um, so marijuana is a gateway drug. If it does exist today, it's because it's illegal. Once you, once you get hooked up with the dealer, you're now in this black market and it may be there. If it's legal, at least we do have control. And uh, to, to Chief Walker's thing, it sounds like uh, it'd be a little easier because everyone would congregate outside of these dispensaries selling drugs. At least we'll, we'll know where the people are. Uh, Colorado did experience an increase in deaths in the last three years. It went up 29%. Um, although in the past year, deaths with people with high levels of marijuana, what Colorado would consider impaired by marijuana, went down. But it has gone up overall, especially the deaths with people with small amounts of marijuana. But as someone else said, it stays in your body for 30 days. So you may get high on the first and have an accident on the 25th. You will test positive. Uh, but in general, um, I, I, I believe that the real crisis here in America, it's not drugs and it's not guns. And the left and right in our country like to blame the symptoms and not the root cause. We have a mental health crisis, crisis in this country. And if, until we really address that, we're, we're only going to be attacking the symptoms here. You really need to get down to that. So um, I, I do um, encourage the, the council to look into modifying the um, the, what you're voting on today, to, to just limit it to dealing right now. I think that presents a nice compromise, gives our, uh, our town a chance of business. I realize there's no more rateables in town, even if they are full. It sounds like that 2% excise tax, which I have no idea about, but it sounds like that could be another possible uh, point of revenue in the town. Um, and I, I really just want to keep our town open and free as much as we can. So uh, as a libertarian, <laughs> it's really um, just against everything I believe in for our town to just continue to put rules on. We may not like it, and I don't like it either, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I want to force a, my opinion onto other people, and I don't want to see our council do it. Thank you. Second. Uh, roll call on closing public, please. Council members Bolton. Mr. Bolton, we are uh, taking a roll call on closing public for the uh, marijuana ordinance. Uh, yes, on closing public. Thank you. Councilman Ferretti. Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Member Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. All right, Mr. Mayor, I could recite a resolution to put it on the table then for uh, your discussion? Yes, sir, if you would, okay. please. Uh, resolve that Ordinance 2018-13 as read by title. Be it is hereby adopted and the, municipal clerk, the acting municipal clerk is hereby authorized to publish notice of passage of same in the official newspaper of the municipality. 
I'll move it. Mr. Martucci moves it. Second. Mr. Noonan seconds. Any council discussion? Uh, do you want to go around the table? Councilwoman, would you like to start? Yeah, I'll or? start. First, I want to thank everybody who came out tonight to speak on both sides of that, especially the people who work with AWARE and serving our young children and keeping them safe. I especially want to say to Nurse Jeanette Davison, thank you for the Narcan. I don't know if that went off the training that was on the 16th with the snowstorm. If, if it hasn't, I'd love to see it back again. And also for the e-cigarettes that you mentioned that is coming up <clears throat> on the 29th. With that in mind, I have to say that I agree with separating the recreational from the medicinal. I think that the FDA just approved um, an ingredient of marijuana to treat epilepsy. So there are veterans who have spoken before this council who have said it has helped them to get off of opioids. So I'd really like to see a clarification in this ordinance, <coughs> taking them to and separating it. I also looked at an ordinance that um, Ridgewood just recently passed. And in their ordinance, what they did was they put in stuff for vaping because as our nurse just told us, children are using these vapors to smoke marijuana in schools and they're getting smaller and easier to hide. So what the Ridgewood Village Council did was they introduced a $1,200 annual fee to any business wishing to sell electronic smoking devices known as cigarettes or vapes, e-cigarettes or vapes. And in doing so, the village um, was able to require local licenses for these vendors which has been part of their ordinance that they put into effect for um, not only marijuana, recreational marijuana, but also to address other instances that are plaguing our children. So at this time, I would like to see this ordinance revised to separate recreational from medicinal and also to include an ordinance to require that we put vaping in here too, because right now, vaping is something that's really plaguing our communities. There's been a 78% increase in use in vaping in high school students. There's been a 48% increase in vaping with middle school students. And as many people have said, this legislation hasn't come down yet, and we're jumping to address it, where the vaping problem is here, it's present, and I don't see us doing anything to address that. If we are going to come up with something, I think we can combine the two. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ferretti? <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, I'd also like to thank the people who came out to speak on it on both sides. Um, it's obviously a passionate issue for many people. Um, I feel like uh, people aren't, don't necessarily understand the way it's written. It's written, it's going to be treated more like alcohol. It's not that you can walk out like you light a cigarette right out of 7-Eleven. I believe it has to be in this child safe container until you're home and in a private place. Uh, I'm just saying it's not like a cigarette. It's more like alcohol. You're not allowed to have it in your car and things like that. So um, anyway, that all being said, uh, because this is not a law yet or legal yet in New Jersey, I don't think, and we would have six months to make, uh, to make an ordinance like this and pass it. Uh, I believe this should be modified and should be tabled at the, at right now until it's actually legal and we know what we're dealing with. Because I also heard there's a possibility to eliminate divisiveness and extra uh, work for the municipalities that it may be an opt-in situation. You cannot have a dispensary or manufacturing place unless your town has opted in. So until, again, it's actually written and signed, I think we should wait until passing this. That's just my personal opinion. And uh, in general, though, I would have to agree if we were to pass it, we should allow medicinal because uh, there's no, I don't see any negative effect to allowing people to, to uh, medicate using marijuana versus any other medication. That's really the only comments I have on it. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Noonan. Um, 
I'd like to start by thanking Chief Walker for all the comprehensive information he gave me, gave all of us. It was uh, very eye-opening um, about a lot of it. Uh, I, I do have to believe that marijuana is a gateway drug, and like vaping, which is now a problem, the easier you make something available, the more it's going to turn into a problem. Um, yeah, alcohol is available. It is taxed at a higher rate, and hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of impact in this country of what the overall big picture, which is what I'm always looking at, is the overall big picture of everything. So I can't, um, I can't wrap my head around a 2% excise tax being any significant impact to the uh, taxes in, in here uh, in the town of Ringwood. And to illustrate that, I mean, one of the largest percentages of our taxes is the local board of education. And at the recent election, there were seats open, and people didn't even file petitions. So if people really cared about their taxes, maybe they would go to the Board of Education meetings and file petitions to uh, be put on the uh, ballot and get more involved. Um, I just can't believe if you make something easier to get, it's not going to turn into a problem. Something like that's a mind-altering, long-term drug. We have no tests whatsoever for somebody at the moment getting pulled over or whatever to know if they're under the influence or not. Um, yeah, other states like Colorado are illustrating the overall impact. How many people are visiting hospitals and uh, overdose from overdoses of all kinds of drugs. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, Councilman Bolton, do you have uh, some comments? I do, if everyone's able to hear me. You guys hear him in the audience? I can't get any closer, so give that a whirl. <clears throat> All right, well, I'll talk loud. Um, so much like everybody else, I certainly appreciate uh, everyone's time this evening and the, the thought and, and effort that went into everyone's comments. I think one of the things uh, that's important in my mind to clarify is that we're not talking about whether or not to legalize cannabis for recreational use. That's, that's out of our hands. Yeah, at the uh, recent New Jersey League of Municipalities conference, I attended a few packed sessions on this topic, and one thing that's clear is that it's, it's not clear. <laughs> the, uh, uh, even with the legislation introduced yesterday, the forecast is not is not certain on on this topic and there are many things uh, that come into play our discussion tonight is only limited to which cannabis businesses if any are going to be welcome and i think the topic is premature because it's not yet legal and nor is it clear what all of these factors are going to be once the legislation is passed if it is passed uh, we will have months to pass a ban before any rules were to go into effect. I think many of the problems that the chief is going to have to deal with, such as traffic and enforcement, we're going to have to deal with regardless of our local ordinance. Uh, under the latest legislation, uh, there's a 1% the sales tax revenue that's going to be allocated to reimbursing communities for police training uh, related to these changes. Uh, in enforcement, but is that enough? You know, I don't. I would venture to say probably not. Um, and how else would we fund this? As well as I think the need for increased youth education. Our efforts uh, around educating our youth and and our drug prevention efforts for for underage minors are going to need to continue and intensify. Um, no matter what we do locally, because of the backdrop that they're growing up in right now. Um, what we can influence is what mechanisms we have to fund the fight. So I think that, personally, we can clearly and, and resoundingly ban recreational retail dispensaries from our community, but I think we should also make it explicitly clear that alternate treatment centers or medicinal dispensaries are not outlawed. Um, not that any have come a knocking, but just as a matter of, uh, of principle and, and drawing that clear distinction. Um, the version of the bill, like I mentioned already, uh, introduced yesterday, includes a 2% excise tax, which, in my mind, 
um, does change the proposition for us in Ringwood um, because it means that we do not have to have a retail establishment in order to gain financial benefit from this hypothetical industry and an opportunity for us to gain some revenue from either a grower or a processor or a lab testing facility. And I actually have a, an anecdote for this and something that actually kind of crystallized it a little bit for me uh, in my own mind, where a Ringwood resident of, of means, so this is not just a, a, a fly-by-night hypothetical for the individual anyway, you know, mentioned a desire and a group of fellow investors that would like to open up a cannabis bakery. So this would be an employment opportunity and a revenue source for the borough, which would have none of the risks feared for our children. Goods would be produced out of sight and leave our town for sale and consumption. But under the ordinance as we've got it written now, we'd be sending this resident's business to another location, which strikes me as a missed opportunity. I don't think that these other types of businesses trigger the same risks that cause concerns for our law enforcement and, uh, and our health professionals. Um, so tonight, if, if we act, I would like to either narrow the focus of this ordinance to the recreational retail facilities uh, or dispensaries, or simply table it until we're actually talking in, a, in an environment where it has been legalized and all of the details have been made clear for us. All righty, thank you. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, any, any comments you want to add? Yeah, sure. Uh, I want to thank everybody who spoke tonight. I think you all made some valid comments. However, personally, I think this is misguided. Okay, I. Uh, uh, we bring when needs to get to get to get these community developers to get a tight get a hundred percent back to normal. Passaic County never state agency in the in this the state farming and Passaic County farming and New Jersey Historic Society Society and Ringwood Board of Education and Passaic Passaic County Board of, Board of Education. Thank you, Mike. Uh, for months, you read in the paper the state legislature falling all over themselves. Okay with the promise of getting big uh, sales tax for the state from the sale of marijuana. So everybody wants to give up what they previously, previously held sacred just for the sake of money. And I find a problem with that, okay? Um, there is no mechanism really set up in the current law. Um, <coughs> I think it's a money grab on part of the state. Uh, we've been promised revenue before in terms of the Highlands Act, which we didn't see any. Um, there is no control on the product, okay? So uh, in terms of safety, what's the control on the safety, okay? If you walk into CBS and you're getting a uh, antibiotic, you could pretty be self-assured, you know that it says 20 milligrams of a specific uh, antibiotic, that's where you get it. In the business of cannabis, one shop could be a different strength or whatever than the other. So, um, you know, you want to sell these salt to the devil to make 2%. I mean, are we really that desperate? And are our legislators that desperate that they're falling all over themselves to get this money? There's other ways they could get money. They could trim the budget, cut back on the personnel, look for ways to fund our schools. The 2% is not going to help fund our schools. And there's still not a mechanism to attain that 2%. So, um, I don't see any upside on this, and I it, I would rather um, take action now. We can wait and see what happens, but the state's in charge of this, and that's a scary thing amongst itself. 
I mean, all you see them talking about is money. They're not talking about quality of life. They're not talking about it's, you know, because, you know, uh, the millennials and people do it more. It's about how much revenue they can get into Trenton. And they're not even pinpointing where the money's going to be going to. Okay, it's not going to come back to us in initial aid. So uh, it's not signed into law, but um, everything that I've read, that I've seen, doesn't um, make anything easy for Ringwood. Okay, it makes everything hard for Ringwood. And I think in terms of the type of town we have, we like to protect the way it is. And at this point, I don't see any business uh, for this being in Ringwood. No, thank you, Jim. Um, a couple things. Um, I think the ordinance is written the way it's written because we can't regulate medicinal marijuana. So uh, that's going to be regulated by the state and it's going to be more of a vertical kind of thing where it has to be grown, processed, tested and, and sold on the same site or something like that. Um, so in any case, we can't, we can't reach out and do any kind of regulation on the medicinal stuff. We don't have to specify medicinal versus recreational uh, in this ordinance to, uh, to do what we want to do. We're, we are targeting the recreational above over 21, whatever we want to call that. Um, uh, um, uh, I, um, I'm just, I'm all kinds of twisted. Um, I, I keep on hearing about the opioid crisis and, and the tragedies that we have in town. Um, and then we're jumping on the first opportunity to clap when uh, a, a, a new intoxicant becomes available. Uh, I, I don't get it. We, I had people asking me if I, if I was concerned about the element that, that the drug treatment center would bring into town. Now, this is a place where people are going to be paying, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month uh, to try to get clean from drugs. Uh, and people were, were actually asking me with a straight face to, uh, that, well, we're, we're introducing this element into town. Um, and I thought that element was trying to get clean. I thought that was, I thought that would be a good thing. Um, and, and they, you know, they, they were people of means. Um, so I didn't see a problem there. And then, you know, uh, so we don't want a treatment. You know, I'm hearing from some people that they don't want a treatment center in town. And some people are perfectly fine having a, a marijuana business in town. Uh, I, I can't keep, I can't keep it all straight. My, my, uh, yeah, my, my, my little libertarian mindset gets overloaded when, when all this stuff gets, uh, goes crossways on us. Um, uh, I, speak, speaking of the libertarian mindset, uh, this would be a great opportunity for government to shut up, um, possibly decriminalize this thing if that's the big problem. If it's a social justice issue um, where, where we're, we're you know, locking up a, 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 a lot of minority men for uh, small level possession crimes or something like that, um, that can get addressed in a, in a, in a different fashion. Uh, it looks like they're trying to solve that problem and trying to plug a revenue gap, and it's a little bit unseemly. I don't I don't like the the the, the whole lay of that uh, of that land. You know, it's it's like all of a sudden we're okay with it if we can get a cut. Uh, we'll be okay with uh, with gambling if the state can get a cut. Um, it's these things where, you know, your, your, your bookies and your drug dealers were, you know, were, were kind of that, 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 you know, underclass of, of society. And as governments, we're willing to do business with them as long as we can get a cut. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me, any, any of this. Um, uh, my biggest, uh, well, two, two, more, two more points. One, I do not see uh, great economic development coming from marijuana businesses. Uh, we do see a 2% excise tax, a 1% excise tax. Uh, also in the, in the 2703, uh, uh, that, that, that Senate bill that, that, that just came out of the joint committees, um, there's also written in there where uh, the, the state will collect the taxes and 1% of that tax revenue will go back to the municipalities where uh, where that business was conducted or something like that. Always a bad idea to route your money through Trenton. I know, Mr. Bolton, you said uh, uh, that there's a version of this where it goes directly into uh, the, the, the municipalities. That's good. 
Um, but you know, how many, how many car trips? Every time, every time we talk about economic development, people want to knock it down by if, if, if it's the kind of economic development they don't like. Uh, they want to knock it down by saying, well, it's going to cause traffic. Um, all economic development causes traffic. As a matter of fact, we want other people to drive their money into town and leave it here. That's the plan. So we're going to see traffic. Uh, it would take an awful lot of, uh, of, of traffic to make this, you know, to, 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 to make marijuana uh, a useful tool um, to, uh, to, to, to the borough as far as it, it's, it's, its financial picture going forward. Um, and it really comes down to, uh, oh, uh, Chief Walker gave us a great deal of information. Um, uh, Ms. Davidson gave us a great deal of information. There's more information out there. Just this week, um, there, is a, uh, uh, there was a college out in Colorado that did a pretty full uh, review of it. It was about 150 pages, a whole lot of statistics and such. Uh, you can go through it. You'll get turned around. Uh, and then, as always, when you read these things, you have to look at, are these people trying to back up what their original bias was with the new data that they get now? It's hard to tell where these people are coming from when they, when they publish all their data. Uh, there's this um, Western states, it's like a, uh, a drug interdiction alliance of high level, um, uh, you know, high level uh, police organizations. Um, and they came out last month, I think, with, with a report um, that, that also was pretty negative on the, on the, uh, on the net cost versus benefits uh, to the Colorado legislation. Um, we can't affect what's going to happen in the state. This thing is dialed in. It's just a matter of cutting the deals, and they're going to figure out a way to get this in. And um, what we can do is, is make a statement about you know, what we value. Um, and I would think um, this town, uh, we're not looking for that kind of economic development where we're going to be putting out another, you know, addictive uh, intoxicant out into the public and, and pat ourselves on the back like we're doing a good thing. Uh, we want to send a message to our kids that we don't agree with it. If a marijuana business was asking to open as they were in West Milford, we'd be having a different conversation. We'd actually have something tangible to look at and, 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 try, to, and try to understand. Uh, that's not the case. Um, there is very limited new construction that's going to be going on in town. Um, that's, that's one of the biggest reasons why I don't think there's much, much coming out of this for, uh, uh, for us. So I, 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 lean, I, I, I agree with this ordinance. Um, I would like to see what the state finally comes up with. Uh, I have a feeling that the longer you let this thing bounce around Trenton, the less you're going to like it. Um, uh, but uh, I think the message is that you know we are you know we, we, we are against this. We are we want to be a place. What what are my vision of Ringwood? Um, it's a safe place to raise your kids. That's one thing we can we can do. Uh, we do it pretty well, um, and that's even if you're not here and you don't you don't want to come here and raise a family. You want to sell your house to somebody who wants to come here and raise a family, um, and th this kind of approach, where you know we don't want anything to do with marijuana businesses, makes a lot of sense in that in that context. Uh, also, we passed this ordinance, and if somebody does want to have a marijuana business, um, they can come and get a use variance. Use variances are wonderful things. We now get to actually regulate them uh, in, in, in a way that, uh, that would comport with what the borough wants to do. So you would be able to say, you know, uh, you'd be able to, to regulate their advertising. You can't have, you know, you, no graphics on your trucks or on your, on your buildings. Um, you, there'd be ways to deal with that if there's, if there's a realistic, uh, you know, proposal on the table it can, it can still be looked at and addressed. It's not going to be, you know, turned away. Um, if, if somebody really wants to do that in this town, they can come in and make an application. They always can. That's always available to them. Um, so that's my, uh, that's what I'm thinking right now. It's kind of disjointed, but the whole conversation is there's a whole lot of information out there. Um, and it's very hard to tell uh, where this is going to go. We are going to get stuck with whatever the state does, we're going to see a lot of those bad outcomes just due to what the state is going to do to us. 
Uh, but we don't have to bring that into our town. That's my that's my take. Mr. Heck, you're hemming and hawing. <coughs> I have some clarifications. I, I took tried to take a lot of notes. Um, a couple things from the from the management perspective. Uh, funding our police department is is difficult. Um, training, uh, the mandated training that's continually coming down from the state is something that we all have to come up with funding for. We all have to find ways to creatively fund it. Um, Chief and I have talked many times about how, what kind of funding would we need if this in fact does become a law. And these are fact, these are things that we face here every day. Uh, we have trouble with uh, with all the mandates that come down, and, and and it becomes more and more difficult to to continue to fund that. Um, Chief and I talk about it regularly. Um, I, I tried to do a little bit of math here. I, I said, let's put this into perspective for everybody that's here. Um, you mentioned that the dime bag is fifty dollars, or no, it would probably be close to that. Okay, so in order to, if you have a if you have a million dollars worth of sales, fifty dollars a dime bag, that's twenty thousand dime bags that they would have to sell in order for the borough of Ringwood to realize twenty thousand dollars in revenue, of which will significantly go to the police department to try and figure out how we're going to regulate, manage, how we're going to. You know, uh, test DUI is easy with with alcohol because there's breathalyzer. So there's a, there's a, that's something that you all have to consider how we're going to fund that type of aspect in the budget. Um, relative to, uh, I heard people saying that uh, we shouldn't do this yet. We should, but this, keep in mind, folks, is there's a master plan in the borough of Ringwood, and what this is is a zoning ordinance. And zoning ordinances are done in advance. Zoning ordinances are put into place. They're not reactive, they're proactive by definition. That's why you have a master plan, and that's why you send an ordinance to the planning board to say, does this, does this comport to the master plan that, you, that the town over the years has created? And, and that's what this process is. So um, if, in fact, an ordinance needs to be changed down the road, it goes through this exact same process and can be changed and altered down the road. But a master plan, a zoning ordinance, by definition, is generally done in advance. If you do it after the fact, if there's an application before a board, as an example, you can't change the zone while there's an application before a board. And that's what this particular application, uh, this vote is for this evening, is for a zoning ordinance to say what's allowed in, in the zones that's permitted. And if it's if you want to do something that's not permitted in the zone, our Board of Adjustment is busier than our Planning Board is because there's no development going to happen because everything is pretty much uh, taken because of the Highlands or open space or, or, or whatever the case may be. Mayor, you are correct. The Board of Adjustment is the place where you would go if you have, if you want to put a type of store or a business in that doesn't agree with this Odin or it's a, there is a mechanism for relief. Um, they talked about a lot of vacancies in the industrial park. There's not a lot of vacancies in the industrial park. Um, and they're not going to be building any new buildings. And even if there is a vacancy currently, that building is paying taxes to the borough of Ringwood. So there's not going to be that big windfall. You're not going to get more additional taxes from it. It's already paying taxes. Um, I worry about CDL drivers. Like we have CDL drivers in the borough of Ringwood. How are, and, and this is a, this is a more global issue. What, how do we have, we have uh, CDL drivers driving through town and we have our own here in the borough of Ringwood. Most of our DBW guys are. How we send them out for regular trust testing, drug testing. How do, how is that going to impact our budget? And how is that going to change? Um, so these are all things that, that we as a as a group have to think about. And I know that everybody on this board uh, has talked a lot about uh, different options. They've, they've they've researched this. So the, the the folks that are saying that they haven't done any research or. or it's a knee-jerk reaction. I will tell you, everybody on, on this council has spent a lot of time. They've sent a lot of questions. We've given them a lot of information. They've done a lot of research. So I, I, I don't want anybody to think that this council hasn't done that. Whatever side of, of the equation they're on, they, each and every person here has spent a lot of time looking into this. Um, Mayor, I think you covered all the other things that came up. Um, I talked about training, CDL, um, and the vacancies. I think that's it. I would like to share with the council the ordinance that was passed in uh, Ridgewood just because I think it would add value if we're going to do anything to cover everything. Because theirs speaks to specifically tobacco shops, cannabis shops, and the major problem of today, which is the electronic vapor substance inhalation shops. I'm sorry, I should have covered that as well. We do have a paraphernalia ordinance that prohibits it entirely in Borough of Ridgewood currently. But we have um, vape sales here in town currently. The ordinance covers anything that can be used to inhale and just. So, so they can't. Vape, vape shops can be. The 
to put THC in the vape pipes. Right, and they're able to get vape pipes where cigarettes are sold, right? Well, they're not supposed to. We have an ordinance against We have a paraphernalia ordinance, it's called. Yeah. I think I made a But they're tobacco, the, um, the they're rules. tobacco related, so they're, they're available. Tobacco, yeah, but if they could be converted, like a pipe. They're converted, right. Yeah, a, a pipe. I don't think they're sold, though. Just, I think one place sells jewels, and I don't think that they have the pods the, there's, the ordinance also resend you, but we have a paraphernalia ordinance. But it would be more proper, in my opinion, that you would amend the paraphernalia ordinance to include that instead of attaching it to this one. Well, uh, this one has a license fee for anyone that is selling it, jewels or cigarettes, that gives $1,200 paid directly to the health department to help combat misuse of these no, it's substances. No, a good ordinance, but it could be better no. used mm -hmm. on a paraphernalia, so I'd just add it to that ordinance because that's been in effect since 1980 or 85. Okay, well, I'd like to get a copy of that. It's in the packet, but I'll reset it. Okay. And if you would share. Uh, I will. That, that's I'll give this to Nicole. That'd be great. Thank you. I just like, uh, just, just one point because it came up. This ordinance does not purport to cover medi uh, medicinal dispensaries at all. In fact, uh, even under all the bills, we have no authority to do that. The only thing that this is really uh, is, is covering is only those uh, uh, modes of production and sales that are allowed that you can't opt out of under the prospective bills, okay? So if this, uh, I, think the, the, uh, the, uh, I think six or eight are allowed throughout the state. They're determined by the state government, not local. And I understand there are more that will be uh, pr uh, approved in the, in the future, but this ordinance does not address that, doesn't bar it, has, no, has nothing to do with that with medicinal use. It's purely the recreational aspect. Mm -hmm. My concern so. that is it, 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 it just straight says marijuana. It says mm -hmm. while I get that the state controls the medicinal, the town ordinance just saying it, while it may not be enforceable, it might. It's enough to scare away me from, say, trying to bring green leaf into the town to, as a medical dispensary mm -hmm. in terms of medicinal. Yes, but every, it, it, yes. it, it's just the way it's worded. Right. I get what you're saying. I'm just saying like. Well, every word is a, is a term of art that's in the ordinance because it was specifically taken from the bill, and the bill defines everything, okay? The first okay? version, though, that's right. Well, that, that, was, that was not prepared by us, okay? That was another town's ordinance that was just put here for discussion purposes, and we made it clear we're not touching, we, we can't, we cannot legally touch uh, the medicinal aspect of it. The sale of okay? it. I think Recreational sales, yes. Well, no, I'm saying I think the sale for okay. this was still, uh, towns could still kind of say, go to another town. I'm the not following what you're saying. But well, that's up to the state legislature. That's, that's not our issue. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, everybody, uh, any further comments from the council? Uh, we have a motion. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Bolton. I would just clarify, so the, the one percent, um, your mark that I was referring to, that would be going the route through Trenton. Mm -hmm. uh, the 2% municipal excise is direct, and that would stay within Ringwood. That wouldn't pass through uh, Trenton, and that would be on, on wholesale. So it wouldn't be about dime bags, but it would be about you know whatever volume of product is being sold out of the, uh, the industrial park. Thank you. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, we have a roll call, please. Council members Bolton. I'm, I'm going to abstain because this is uh, premature before it's actually legalized. Peretti. Abstain, I think this is a premature ordinance. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Yes. Council members Noonan. Yes. O'Keefe. I would like to abstain also until I see the final legislation as it's passed and then to tailor this ordinance to address that legislation. Mayor Speer? Yes. Uh, the ordinance we... does not pass. It does not pass. No. We need four affirmative votes. Very good. Just, uh, just so you're aware, Councilman Davison uh, is, I think, in the air right now. Uh, he was visiting, uh, visiting family for the holidays. Um, 
so he was not able to attend by phone uh, or in person here tonight um, and leaving us with uh, with six voting members here tonight um, continuing Council, we have our yes, next order. Uh, Do you want to take a, uh, is there, if everybody is, uh, I'm going to take a five minute recess and let the room clear out if anybody is uh, interested. Tracy, five minutes, 920. Oh, thank you.
Okay, and uh, we are back, our November 27, 2018 business meeting of the Council of the Borough of Ringwood. Uh, we are still under the old business section of our agenda. Uh, next is uh, ordinance number 2018-14, Councilor, if you would. Uh, yes, uh, an or uh, motion to read by title, please. That's uh, 28 So moved. As you said, Mr. Mayor. Second. Roll call on reading by title. Council members Bolton? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay, an ordinance amending chapter seven, traffic section 7-20, stop intersections, the revised ordinance of the Bell Bringer to create a stop intersection. Okay. Uh, Mr. Heck, can you describe these uh, yeah, proposed changes to our, to our traffic? The engineer and the uh, and the police chief. Uh, this is the intersection of Lakeview Avenue, Maple Road, and Erskine Road. Um, they're, they're they're changing some of the yields and stops. Right now, our ordinance called for four-way stops, and and this is the second reading of this. This is uh, amending the ordinance to allow for for stop signs as opposed to the four-way stop intersections, um, as recommended by the engineer and the police chief. So okay. more. Well, the matter has to be open to the public. Um, uh, for sorry. Okay. Uh, Ordinance number 2018-14 is now open to the public. Anybody wishing to uh, comment on said ordinance, please come to the microphone and uh, state your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, move close. Second. Mr. Noonan, Mr. Ferretti. Roll call on closing public, please. Council members Bolton? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay, resolved in Ordinance 2018-14. <coughs> uh, as read by title, is hereby adopted, and the municipal clerk are hereby directed to publish notice of passage of the same in the official newspaper of the municipality. And do we have the, anybody to make a motion on that resolution? So moved. Mr. Noonan? Second. Mr. Martucci? Um, any council discussion? Are we really changing the ordinance to match what's out there now? No, they put stop signs instead of yield signs, uh, so no. Okay. But it's similar, yes. We're, we're changing the ordinance so that there's not a four-way stop. Uh, the ordinance used to, used to call for a four-way stop at that intersection. Okay, because coming off of Erskine Road, you can go straight up to onto Lakeview. That's correct. Without a stop at that at that point. And, and that will continue. You'll be able to go continue through. It's going to be a stop at Maple and a stop. A stop at, at Maple View. coming in and then a stop at, at Lakeview when you pass Little Beach. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. So pretty much That's what we have now will be pretty just, much just with just the exception codified. of the yield sign, Scott. Okay. Very good. Uh, any other council discussion? It can be a great change. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. Roll call, please. Council members Bolton? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Thank you all. Next next matter, ordinance number 2018-15. Councilor, if you would. Yes, uh, uh, for 2815, a motion to read by title, please. So moved. Second. Mr. Noonan, Mr. Ferretti, roll call and reading by title. Council members Bolton? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2014-19, fixing the salaries of the employees of the Borough of Ringwood County for State State in New Jersey, as negotiated with United Public Service Employees Union, uh, initials UPSEU, blue collar. And that can be open to the public. Uh, this matter is now open to the public. Anybody wishing to address the council? On ordinance number 2018-15, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Seeing no one coming forward, I move to close the public session. Second. Noonan, uh, roll call on closing public, please. Council members Bolton? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ordinance 2815, uh, as read by title, being is hereby adopted, and the municipal clerk is hereby directed to publish notice of passage of same in the official newspaper of the municipality. Do we have that motion? So moved. Second. Union, Mr. Martucci. 
Any council discussion? These are for your 17, 18, and 19. Yeah. Yes. Same, yeah. Yeah. This was the union that changed over from the Teamsters to, to right. UPSEU. So there was a there was a delay in there. Uh, what are, what are the odds that we're not going to come in and amend this because we missed something by a couple cents in one of these? There's only 400 numbers here. There's only 400 numbers here. One of them's got to be wrong. We always we always come back and uh, let's hope and modify that. It can't, it can't be can't be helped. Uh, any council discussion on this? Take a roll call, please. Council members Bolton. Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Thank you. Next on the agenda, uh, there being no new business, we have resolutions. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, resolution 2018-2004, whereas the Chief Financial Officer has certified the funds are available for the payment of the current bill list in the amount of $479,786.06. Supplemental payments in the amount of five million eight hundred thirteen thousand three hundred ninety-seven dollars and seventy-seven cents. Merchant services fees in the amount of two hundred thirty-five dollars fifty-seven cents, and Salapoa uh, Dam Assessment Fund in the amount of forty-three thousand one hundred seventy-eight dollars and sixty cents, to be credited to the following named accounts for a total of six million three hundred thirty-six thousand five hundred ninety-eight dollars and zero cents of which uh, the Board of Education is receiving $1,605,943. Lakeland is receiving $882,474. And Passaic County is receiving $3,077,771. Okay, uh, do we have a, uh, a motion for resolution 2018-204? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Council members Bolton? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Uh, I'm going to abstain because of this Slipawa Dam session. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Thank you. Resolution 2018-205, uh, resolution authorizing the execution of a shared service agreement with the Borough of Pompton Lakes for the uh, provision of storm water, uh, storm water uh, system clearing for, for Pompton Lakes. This is one of those programs we have a shared service where we go down to Pompton Lakes and they pay us to do two weeks of uh, storm cleaning on their storm drains with our vector truck and our crews. Uh, we, we increased it 2% uh, this year. Um, this has been a pretty successful program over the last bunch of years. Um, they're happy and, and our guys are happy, so. Very good. Very good. Uh, do we have a motion? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Martucci. Second. Mr. Noonan, any discussion? Roll call, please. Council members Bolton? <coughs> yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. We charge Pop the Lakes $1,428 a day for this service. 2018-206, whereas a contract was awarded to Tilcon, New York, using the Morris County Co-op for the 2018 road program, contract number 2018-2, whereas the borough engineer has submitted and recommends the payment in the amount of $344,334.65, invoice number C1810076 for the work completed. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Municipal Council of the Borough of Ringwood hereby approves the payment in the amount of $344,334.65 to Tilcon, uh, New York, uh, precipitating New Jersey, subject to the receipt of the certified payroll records and the monthly management reports. Humble. Second. Mr. Martucci, Mr. Peretti. Any discussion? Mr. Hatt. Yes. I see they, they call out the 15% of the recycled asphalt product. Mm -hmm. Is that the highest allowed by the state? I mean, the technology exists to go so much higher, but that's it. Yeah. Yes. Some states are up to 40, 50 percent recycled material. Correct, mm -hmm. the, but the, we don't. We don't. And they can't give standard. away the grindings fast enough. Right. right. We, the, we we use the uh, we use the co-op for this, and the, the, based upon their. Standards. But it's the state yeah. DOT that sets the maximum, the right? Correct. The state yeah. is actually yeah. who governs that. Yes. So we could recycle a higher percentage of the uh, 
grinding zone we Asshole. do it and we don't bother doing it instead we they try to find places to dump the stuff yes yes thank you dot yes. new jersey and we used to use the millings for some of our dirt roads and stuff and that is no longer permissible according to ddp rules so you we can can't pave with it but you can't like so down even, cold and compact it down for roads correct mm -hmm. where it's actually permeable mm -hmm. hmm. okay Okay. Um, we have a uh, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Council members Bolton. Yes. Peretti. Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Yes. Council members Noonan. Yes. O'Keefe. Yes. Mayor Spear. Yes. Mayor, we have a resolution uh, 2008-207. We received a request from uh, from a uh, business owner in town to uh, explore the option of hooking up uh, to. Wanaku uh, sewer system um, down on the southern end of town um, near the border of, of Wanaku. Uh, this individual has two commercial properties and he has requested uh, through the clerk's office that uh, we give him permission to uh, request your approval to apply to Wanaku for permission to hook up to the existing sewer system. I understand that granting this approval would not commit to go ahead with the project merely the first step in obtaining governmental approvals. Um, and I urge you to act expeditiously. Um, I, based upon this letter for your consideration this evening, I prepared a resolution, um, and I think that the resolution, um, and in, in conjunction with Mr. Klimak, I think the resolution um, probably will do what you needed to do and still preserve your rights for approvals. Um, would you like me to read it, or do you want to talk about it first? Uh, well, it should be with the council. It was included in your packet. Was one version of the resolution. It's been updated. Uh, it's in your at your place in yellow. Uh, yes, Mr. Hack, if you uh, you know what, I can read it into the record. Okay. Uh, resolution 2018-207, whereas Charles Forbes has requested approval for, to apply to the Wanakee Borough Water Department for permission to connect <coughs> Lot 12 and Block 749 in the Borough of Ringwood to the existing sewer line in Ringwood Avenue, and whereas Mr. Forbes understands that granting this approval to investigate the connection to the Wanakee Borough Water Department would not be a commitment to proceed with this project. Therefore, be it resolved by the Municipal Council of the Borough of Ringwood that approval is hereby granted for Mr. Forbes to apply to the Wanakee Borough Water Department with the understanding that final approval from the Borough of Ringwood will be considered when more detailed information about the project is received and also subject to the Highlands Act and a review of the wastewater management plan for the Borough of Ringwood. Be it further resolved that approval of this first step by the Municipal Council should not be construed as implied or expressed endorsement of any application to any <coughs> Ringwood Board or any application to any other governmental entity having jurisdiction over the matter. Uh, that is the resolution in front of us now. Does anyone e want to make a motion? I would like to, um, I talked to <clears throat> the town manager to see if there were any other properties hooked up on Ringwood Avenue, and currently there aren't any other properties hooked up. I also wanted to know if any other properties had asked to be hooked up previously and denied. Unfortunately, I couldn't get an answer to that question yet. I just want to make sure that we're being fair across the board. If any other business has been denied in the past, I'd like to know if that is something that has occurred. I don't know. In my tenure, <coughs> one has asked for permission and been no. denied. Um, but there, I mean, there could have been years ago. I don't know that. Um, so to, to my knowledge, I don't think that there's anybody that has, that has been asked for permission. And, but it could have happened many, many years ago. And certainly in the last 10 years, there hasn't been. Um, as the sewer superintendent or the superintendent of sewer, I have to sign off on all those documents, and I have none except for the residents that are on this list that have applied over the years, and, and they're, they're very few. Um, and they're, they're mostly on Concord Town Road. The people along Ringwood Avenue that are tied into the Wanaku uh, water system are in that area, but I have no sewer tie-ins. So you, you, yeah, I, I thought there was an instance earlier that yeah, something It could had. very well have been prior to my tenure, but in my tenure there hasn't been. And does it have any impact on the fact that Ringwood residents had voted against having sewers in town, the fact that I, uh, someone's looking up? That's certainly I know that was question. happened many years ago also, but just 
if it's part of our master plan, how does this impact that? Oh. <clears throat> Just curious. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I thought I saw the diner constructing a, a septic system in that back parking lot there. That's 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 further to the north and goes goes deep. I thought there were I thought they had a system back there. I could be wrong. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but what we have right now is a sewer pipe in front of a property. Um, it, the sewer pipe is operated by Wanaku. Uh The property is in Ringwood, and it's it's readily accessible. So it's just a question of whether um, uh, we would we would agree that uh, uh, that this property owner goes forward and tries to investigate. Uh, whether that hookup is possible, there's still a you know, some some investigation to be, be done there, um, and all we're looking for is just to allow the the property owner to um, uh, to do that investigation, um, and we would uh, and 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 by approving this, we would approve that if it is possible, we would go along with it, you know, pending any other further information that comes from you know the the, the proposal as it gets further fleshed out. Um, but I don't know if I, I, nobody, I don't recall since 2008, anybody asking this question. And if it's going right basically past his house. It's past that, it's past the building, yes. Property. Yeah. Makes sense. Sure. Mayor, for clarification, well. since 2008, there have been people that hooked up, um, but they were on Conklin Town Road. We have eight sewer connections to the borough of Wanakew in Ringwood currently according to the the, uh, the customer list from the borough of Wanaku. And I think uh, eight or nine uh, water hookups to Wanaku as well. So those have yeah. um, happened in the last 10 years, you're saying? I don't know no, when they all happened. I know that no. some of them have happened in the last, within my tenure in Congo Town Road, nothing on Ringwood happened. Okay, I just want to make sure we're fair no. to everybody in town. Yeah, sure. If people are applying that we're not denying some and approving others. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Knowing that, though, I'd be more likely to say that this is fine. It's not like the first time. Mm -hmm. So moved. Well, by the way, just to be clear, this is not an endorsement of any plans uh, that this person has. Uh, if they're going for variances, this is not to be construed, implied, or expressed. Uh, it's not evidential at all, okay? Uh, he has to make a meet a burden that he may or may not meet. And that's a, if he goes before a board, he also has the highlands uh, that he has to uh, get through, and that's again we're not we're not expressly or impliedly approving this or endorsing it in any way. Okay. And I fully understand that, and I think that's a, that's a good and important clarification. Depending upon what he hears from Wanakew and the highlands, um, how or or are we able to kind of factor that into our current housing dilemma when it comes to the types of units that would be constructed or you know is there a, a mechanism by which we're able to guide him in a in a way that would help us meet some of uh, obviously not all but at least some of um, our affordable obligation and potentially also uh, look at that section of ringwood avenue holistically from a, from a zoning perspective so that it's not his property in isolation, but if you know he gets a variance, or you know if this is an area where uh, mixed use may may be an appropriate change for a, a section. Um, I, I think we're uh, I think you're jumping ahead a couple steps, but yes, um, uh, we um, uh, we have looked at the southern end of town. Uh, as a potential redevelopment area. Um, I don't think necessarily that far south. I don't think anything south of Skyline Lakes Drive necessarily. Uh, but we could uh, go in and review uh, those areas there. Um, I think the area we were looking at really was uh, north of Skyline Lakes Drive uh, on, on 511. Um, uh, but that's a, that's a good point. Um, and, and, and it's a good point that we should look at it from a planning perspective. Um, Trying to uh, think about how we can regulate it and determine what residential units go in it—that's a little premature, right now. We don't even know if there's a uh, uh, if there's a possible sewer hookup to it. So we wouldn't—it'd be a little, just a little premature to decide. You know, 
densities and 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 housing types uh, that could be permitted on in that zone. Yeah, the board of adjustment would would address some of the uh, <coughs> some of the details of construction and from a uh, wastewater management perspective, I have to make sure it, it complies with the wastewater management plan <coughs> before I would sign any kind of permit. Um, it's got it's got to comport to the wastewater management plan that's adopted. Uh, we have a motion from Mr. Noonan, correct? Correct. Okay, we need a second. A second. Thank you, Mr. Martucci. Any further discussion? Okay, roll call on that uh, resolution 2018-207 in yellow at your at your places. Roll Co call, please. Council members Bolton? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Abstain. Mayor Spear? Yes. <clears throat> Okay. Moving forward, we have the consent agenda. Uh, whereas the mayor and the borough of Ring uh, mayor and council of the borough of Ringwood has reviewed the consent agenda, consisting of various proposed resolutions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following resolutions on the consent agenda are hereby approved: Resolution 2018-208, approval of consent agenda; Resolution 2018-209. Approval of payroll and payroll transfers, month of October. Resolution 2018-210, approval of completion of residential subdivision, Mary Hill, Block 20, uh, 201, Lot 17. Uh, resolution 2018-212, approval of voided check. And resolution 2018-212, authorized redemption <coughs> tax sale certificates. Do we have a motion on the consent agenda? I had a question on 2018-210 on the um, Mary Hill development. It looks like this was from 2004 that this development was done. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So my question is, why did it take so long to get completed? And if there is interest due on this bond that we're paying, um, what is the interest rate? No, we, I don't think we're paying a bond. Well, a, a, a bond, a, a bond. It's a performance bond. It's a guarantee by an insurance company. Okay. It's, it's not. We don't have eighty-six thousand or seventy-seven thousand dollars. All right. So we're not responsible right. for that. The property, the, the the developer posts the bond. Okay. What we're doing is 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 releasing the bond. Okay. Saying that so there's, there's no further no work that needs to be done, that right. would that that bond is covering, and that we can release the bond. So there's no obligation by the borough to pay anything. Correct. And is there any reason why there was a 14-year delay in getting the work done? You know, I don't know. Uh, final done. pavement was done in September 2016. And I don't kept think the, the project started. And kept the performance bond for, yeah, for, for two years. Okay. Just because you got approval doesn't mean that the project was completely started. Okay. That's that okay, thank you. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Yeah. Can we get a motion on the consent agenda, please? I'll move it. Uh, Mr. Martucci? <coughs> Second. Thank you, Mr. Newton. Roll call. Council members Bolton? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Next on our agenda is manager's report. Uh, as you as requested, I kept my manager very, report very short because Thanks, he sir. thought it was going to be a late night, and you were correct. <laughs> um, this evening, uh, before you in green, we have a resolution. What would that number be? Uh, 2018 213. Um, we have a resolution adopting changes to our employee manual as part of our requirements for our insurance company membership with the uh, Morris GIF. Uh, they sent us uh, risk control updates, which include personnel policies and procedures, uh, suggested language for employee manual as, uh, as a risk control method. Um, it includes amendments to the American for Disabilities Act, workplace policies for social media and communication, use of the internet, background checks and procedures uh, for candidates, employees, volunteers, and Open Public Meeting Act procedures uh, relative to personnel matters. It's all, it's all recommendations from the actual insurance company. Um, reviewed by the uh, Labor Council and added to our, uh, our employee manual. Um, the uh, employee uh, 
Labor Council asked us to have the council just formally adopt any changes um, as per the insurance company's request uh, for the employee manual so that there's a record. I'll move. I'll second. Second. So 2000, I'm sorry, I should probably read the resolution. 2018-213, be resolved, Municipal Council of the Borough of Ringwood hereby approves the revisions to the employee manual as recommended and reviewed by the Insurance Carrier and Labor Council. I'll move. Second. Mr. Brady. <coughs> Discussion? Roll call, please. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Um, as we've talked about at the last bunch of, well, not last bunch of meetings, several meetings this year, uh, the James Shark <coughs> Treatment Plant has been a discussion. Uh, the James Shark Treatment Plant needs to have some modifications to address, uh, to address zinc and copper permit limits under the new regulation. Uh, will be required to be compliant by January 1st, 2019. Um, quite a few months ago, we hired Langen Engineering to review this and have applied for an extension which was granted by the New Jersey DEP until November 1st, 2019. Um, I've requested an engineer estimate for your consideration and hopefully at the next meeting I'll have that and be able to advise you and uh, a path forward. We do need to be compliant by that November 1st deadline um, for the uh, zinc and copper for that facility. Uh, current budget, uh, this is a snapshot as, uh, as of 1127. The, the general budget 2018, $15,964,620.21. Paid to date, $13,257,106.94 or 83.04% of the budget. Water operating, uh, the budget is $1,549,046.03. Paid to date, $1,453,501.67. Uh, or 93.83%. Uh, I will tell you, as we've talked about with the Finance Committee and the Council over the past bunch of months, I'm very concerned about the uh, water budget. Uh, with all the rain that we've had, we certainly have not had the revenue that was projected. Um, as you know, uh, the revenue for from this year is what the basis is for the budget for next year. So um, we have had several rate increases, so we're, we're going to need to do something other than that uh, to, uh, to kind of help that budget. But we just didn't sell the water this year. Um, and everybody kind of knows why. I, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So we're, we're working at that, but we're very concerned about it, and I've been working with the Finance Committee to talk about how we're going to handle that going forward. Um, how are we doing with the snowstorm? <coughs> What's that? The snow, a couple weeks ago. The snowstorm, uh, the, the, uh, the, the zero to two inch snowstorm that ended up to be nine inches in Ringwood was, uh, was problematic. It was early. Um, and, you know, I, I, there's some people who were very, uh, complimentary online and there were some people who were very critical online <clears throat> because it was a lot of it was a lot of snow to handle in a short period of time I will tell you that um, unfortunately one of the county truck broke down and the other county truck got stuck in a ditch so we had to take over the operation of the county roads for quite some time and we do that you know often if we need if we need to help them but what that did was it took us off of some of our other roads for a little bit of time so I tried to explain that to some of the folks um, some people were very understanding, some people were not. But I have to tell you, when, when I looked at our roads compared to other roads and the nightmares that I've heard from people from other towns, um, our guys did a great job. And, um, and, and they, should be, they should be commended for that. And uh, they're dedicated. And, and we're short DPW guys, as, as you folks know. Um, when we're trying to fill some of those, those voids. But uh, you know, as people have, uh, have retired or left, we, we have not all filled all those positions. So the guys had to work a little extra hard. Um, on that type of storm, so uh, so yeah, so they, do we they get to build back site? Pardon me? Do we get to build back site county? No, no, listen, we. No, you're going to send up a check for three million dollars, Jim. That's what you're going to do. Uh, when 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 the chips are down and, and the roads need to be cleared, it really at that point doesn't matter. We we got to get the people home. At one point, we had uh, cars stuck from from uh, Marker King Avenue all the way to Skylands Road, dead stop because they couldn't get up the hill. We, as emergency responders, have to solve that. You know, and, and if the county couldn't get there because they were stuck, well, our job is to uh, to, to help. Um, I will tell you that one of our loaders went over on uh, on uh, Slowsburg Road where the truck drove into the ditch for the county. It was one of their large trucks, and uh, our guys uh, uh, with the escort of the police department drove the loader over there and liberated that truck so that we can get it back on the road. But it took three hours out of our schedule. So. Uh, 
So for those people who were not patient, understand that sometimes we have to make these changes and adapt. And if the side road doesn't get done because we have the main corridors done well, that's a, that's a trade-off that we have to do. So. Do we have a water main break with that? Yes, at the same time, uh, right up the street here on Martin King Avenue, um, a uh, car, Martin King Avenue is also a county road, uh, drove over one of our hydrants. And usually uh, when a hydrant breaks, it snaps and there's no, there's no problem. There's a shutoff there. Well, they, they snapped it at the, uh, <laughs> at a spot where we couldn't shut it off and our 12 inch main was free flowing for a very long period of time. During the snow and top of all the snowstorm, we had to get, I called the fire trucks out to try and get them. To, we couldn't pump down the water fast enough because it was emptying our tank. So finally we shut off the system and we had the fire trucks pump out the water so that we can get down to it so that we could shut that part of the system off. So yes, it was a very challenging storm. So uh, again, the DBW guys just did a great job and, and continue to do a great job at, at, at uh, keeping our, our roads good. So, um, I'm sorry, did that, that answer your question? Yeah. Um, okay, so West Milford uh, has been contacting us. They're looking to do a shared service. I'm not sure what that's about yet, but I will get more information and we'll see if, uh, if that's something that we want to look into or not. Um, our paving uh, program is complete. Um, we are still working on some significant drainage projects this year. Unfortunately, we have not been able to complete a lot of them because of obviously the weather. Uh, we've done quite a few, but there's still more that, that we have on the books for this year, and we're, we're trying to resolve those things. I encourage everybody out there to get their leaves out of the way of the drainage. I know the leaf cleanup in, throughout the town has been slow because you know the landscapers are, are experiencing the same thing we are. But when those catch basins are full, it, it not only uh, potentially floods out your neighbor, it if, it, if it's cold at night, it freezes, and, and we've had some problems. So, please, everybody, clean out those storm drains so that they can, uh, so that they, they can work the way they're supposed to work. Um, FEMA, I'm, I'm happy to report that uh, there was FEMA had came in during the snowstorm in last March, and they had said that uh, that it was an eligible, it was an eligible event for FEMA, and uh, so. I started putting all the information together because we, based upon the, all the other FEMA storms that we've had, we document and we do what we can so that if, in fact, they ever declare a storm, we're prepared. We have all the data that we need and we keep all the records, so we were in good shape. However, the snowstorm, they declared it to be uh, an event, but they did not allow you to deduct any costs for snow. It was anything outside of the snowstorm. So. Um, as we look, Helen and I looked at the rules uh, in detail, we found that, well, all of our brush and all of the trees that were down and all of the damage to our roofs and all that stuff uh, was eligible, even though it's ironic that the event that caused the problems, the snow and getting, getting access to people was not eligible. Um, we've been putting in grants for the last three months and we have gotten approximately uh, agreement of $150,000 that FEMA, FEMA will reimburse us for the costs from that storm. So uh, Helen worked very hard uh, at, at getting all those documents together and, and she and I worked uh, with the FEMA coordinators for, for quite some time now. So that's $150,000 approximately that we will be uh, putting into next year's budget which will help offset some of our taxes. Um, and Mayor, I think um, that's all I have for this evening. <coughs> Great, thank you very much Mr. Heck. Attorney's report. Uh, no so. report. Please report. Any uh, any matters for executive session? I have none there. Want me to keep it light? All right. General public comment. Uh, anyone wishing to address the mayor and council? Please come to the microphone. State your name and address for the record. Try to keep your comments you know brief and non-repetitive. Thank you, Toll, 24 High Point Lane. Um, about the drainage, I know you've been doing a lot of work around town with the drainage, but uh, coming down off of my street, High Point, onto Summit, it's always been a problem, and it still is. So I don't know if you want to take a look at that. The ice just runs, it's just treacherous, really. Yeah, we did a lot of drainage <laughs> there in uh, last year before we paved all those roads in, mm -hmm. that, in that area. 
a significant amount of drainage. Some of the some of the, the problem is it's just coming down the street where there, there's a lot of ledge up there, so there's yeah. only certain areas that we can put uh, drainage in. Mm -hmm. But where we could, we did we did put drainage in. We'll look at it again. Yeah. This year being so wet, it's particularly bad. Yeah. Because uh, it's just it's just bleeding out between the rock and the pavement. And, um, yeah, because it is treacherous. You know, when it yes. ices up in the morning, it's, it can be really bad. Yes. Yep. Uh, listening to the discussion about uh, the cannabis and the ordinance and all that kind of stuff, um, I was struck by the fact that many people, including the deputy mayor, said that people are putting profit above health. And you know what? That's what you guys are doing in our town because we have a situation in Upper Ringwood that affects our environment, the health of our environment, and the health of our people. It's, there's contaminated aquifer. O'Connor Landfill has 100,000 tons of toxic soil. And uh, this council majority has uh, put money and Ford's uh, issues, or what Ford wants, above what's best for the people that live in this town, which is a cleanup of the O'Connor landfill and also uh, a, a, a method or a, a strong response to what's going on there with the groundwater. And reading a term sheet uh, that you had agreed uh, to sign with Ford in 2013, you agreed to all of Ford's demands before you even heard anything in order to receive $4.5 million, which you have in, I guess, in, I don't know where it is, in some kind of a fund somewhere. But you agreed to um, cap O'Connor, stop the excavation of the uh, sludge that's there, you agreed to support monitored natural attenuation of the groundwater before you even saw any groundwater reports. You agreed to give the old recycling center to the people in the community, which they do not want. What the people in the community want is for the site O'Connor to be cleaned up and for that land to become open space, which it was for generations. By doing what you're doing, uh, by building a recycling center there. there, You're locking out the community in land that they used for generations. It's so wrong. And your decision to partner with Ford to keep toxic sludge in Ringwood is the worst decision you have ever made. And it's putting money above health. Brandon Gray, 24, 424 Lakeview Ave. I, still have a, I know normally you don't answer, but maybe we'll uh, grant it this time. Regarding the cannabis uh, uh, ordinance, proposed cannabis ordinance, I, th I think people will probably want to know, which is why I'm asking. So it didn't get the required votes tonight. What happens next? It's a dead issue. We could bring it up maybe next year. Okay. All right. Thank you. My name is Elenka Tanis. I live at 50 Upper Lakeview. Um, I was just reading the second term sheet, and I have some I have some questions about it. I read it a number of times, and every time I read it, the only conclusion I come to is that this is totally in favor of Ford, not in favor of the borough. It says this agreement favors it. Uh, Ford is is not admitting any culpability. It lets uh, Ford off the hook. Um, it, it gives Ford the ultimate decision making and, it, and this re, um, releases Ford from judgments, claims, and damages. There's a whole lot of stuff here. And th th I don't understand why this was ever signed. This is totally in Ford's favor, not in the borough's favor. I feel like he threw uh, the borough under the, under the bus. And I'm just really upset when I read, read this because I do think that there should be a total <coughs> cleanup and um, apparently, I, I, I just don't understand why this was ever signed. This is not in the borough's favor at all, and, I'm, and um, it's, 
It's not good for Redwood. That's all I have to say. She don't want to move to close public. Second. Roll call on closing public. Council members Bolton? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Next is the mayor and members of council. Uh, Councilman Bolton, would you like to go first? You can put, take the phone off your ear. It's been there for about three hours now. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. Um, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. General comments. Uh, good now. Folks, still good? Yeah, you're yeah. good. Okay, sorry. Uh, before general comments, I did want to uh, introduce uh, a resolution making some appointments to our Economic Development Commission. We have uh, a group of seven individuals to appoint to the original terms, um, which I can send sent through with the with the dates, but essentially they uh, end their five-year appointments per the uh, per the ordinance, and they end anywhere from 2020 to 2023, depending upon which of the terms they're replacing. Um, these are individuals who have uh, already been coming together uh, and whose uh, citizen leadership forms uh, we have had since the, the last meeting or the, the meeting prior, I forget. Um, but Tom Panafori, Mike Einrenhoff, Kristen Holton, Mitch Kahn, Tom McGowan, Ned Clausen, and Matt Van Allen have all you know, raised their hand to uh, help the borough in this regard. Mayor, if I may, we would have to have, we would have to, if in fact that's in the form of a resolution, uh, Councilmember, we would need to have what slot they would each be going in if in fact you're going to consider that. Can we take this up next week? The question is, can we uh, address this at the next meeting? And can, yeah, you know, I'd like to s see some writing stuff. Uh, you know, All of the citizen part. leadership forms were handed out to the council with each of the first people that have offered to serve. Right. And we are just <coughs> looking to revitalize what really is already an ordinance in town, the EDC. I think as a matter of, of form, we, we need to know what position each person is is filling to, you're not just appointing them to a board, you're appointing people to a specific term. If you're referring to what's right. in existence, so we, we would need to have that before we could really, do you think you could send okay. that to us and we could list that for the next meeting? Sure, if uh, we don't want to read it out, I can, I can definitely email that over. Okay, very good. Let's yeah, let's let's put that in a in a form as a resolution form and take it up at the next meeting. Okay, we'll do. Um, so then, in terms of uh, general comments, I have to say, uh, I know it's been a frequent topic this evening, um, but I have to echo what um, a lot of people have been saying about the DPW and the great job that they did in the latest storm, um, and my perspective on it. I think it's a little unique because we were driving back from Atlantic City in the thick of it because I didn't heed Scott's wise warning to get out of Dodge and I wanted to stubbornly squeeze in you know, one more session uh, at the, the conference. And on our way up, we stopped in Belmar to pick up my father and dropped him home in Westwood. And that trip took us 10 and a half hours. Ways routed us through mostly local roads all along the Hudson, and we cut across Bergen County, starting in Alpine, all the way through. And I have to say that the state of our roads and our community put those more expensive communities really to shame. So we really, um, obviously, it's uh, it's going to be a matter of perspective. But as as I was driving across uh, the entire county, it was uh, it was really impressive to to come home and see the great job that they did. Um, we had a uh, centennial event in November. We had a mystery ride uh, that was created by Eileen Manley um, where cars are given a set of clues 
to drive throughout town and answer questions about the places that they go. Uh, and they try to not only get the right answers, but do it in uh, as little mileage as, as possible. And we had 12 cars register um, and a lot of great participants. It was great to see families with teenagers come out, small children, um, as well as just adults looking for a good time. Um, we were able to you know, give out some great Centennial merchandise, as well as coupons from uh, Subway and, and Dairy Queen. Um, and everybody was able to enjoy, uh, you know, some pizza and beverages from, from Cupsaw Market while, uh, while all the results were tallied. And a special thanks to Lisa Chang and uh, Michael Einrenhoff, who helped score the sheets, which was uh, beyond what I could do. Um, and we had two teams actually tie for first place. Uh, and then uh, the second place team, um, you know, was uh, not, not too far behind them. Overall, everybody had a great time. Uh, I think if we are able to pull it off again, as was requested, uh, we would look to do it uh, before daylight savings and maybe shorten the route because once uh, once it got dark, it was pretty hard to uh, to answer the answer the questions. But uh, even even for those who uh, gave up and, and didn't even complete the route, they had a they had a great time uh, in the attempt. And I just want to give a shout out for uh, this Sunday. Uh, Hard to believe that it's already upon us, but uh, Sunday at 2 o'clock, Santa will be arriving at Fieldstone Plaza, um, and then we have our town Christmas tree menorah lighting at, at 5 p.m. So season snuck up on me, so I just want to make sure that uh, everybody doesn't meet, miss that uh, great time for the community. Well, that's it. Thank you. Are you going to hang out for the balance of the meeting, or are you going to leave us? Oh, I'm here. Okay. But thank you. Very good. Councilwoman? Uh, yeah, I also had the pleasure of attending the New Jersey Municipality um, event down in Atlantic City. I did heed our manager's warning and got out of Dodge quickly. It took me only two and a half hours to get home, and I agreed that it was a great job. One of the things I asked Nicole to do was to send out this recycling um, reimagined. I went to this seminar. It was packed. It was hard to get in. I saw Deb there trying to get in. I don't know if she succeeded or not. So um, it seems it's a big concern with a lot of municipalities where previously recycling was free because the commodity was sold at such a rate that it covered the cost of collecting it, it covered the cost of sorting it, and it also paid back municipalities. Scott has demonstrated how, over the years how that has been going down and it has not yet stabilized. In fact, they're predicting it's going to become a cost to municipalities, not a savings at all. It's um, no longer economically viable. It's going to cost to collect. So I'm thinking at this juncture that um, building a recycling center <coughs> probably isn't in the best interest of the taxpayers of this town. Since running a recycling center, they say now requires a lot more human capital and I would like us to have a resolution to abandon a recycling center at this point because it doesn't make economic sense for this community or any municipality given the current state of the recycling situation. So what do you tell all the residents who bring their recycling up? Their recycling would continue to be picked up, <clears throat> although, as Scott can probably tell you better than I, what are they projecting the cost of um, picking up the recyclables I'm will be? I'm not talking about picking up. I'm talking about on the weekends when people bring stuff up. No, the, the one that we have is sufficient. I'm saying it's not worth investing money in building a new one. Mm -hmm. I, I would keep the one that we have currently, but investing um, millions of dollars to build a new one in the current state of the recycling situation isn't economically viable at this point and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <clears throat> Anything else? Uh, yeah, they're going to um, be having the e-cigs and jewel teen vaping. Uh, what parents need to know that's going to be held on Thursday, November 29th at 7 p.m. at the Ringwood Public Library. 
I would urge people to go. As I stated earlier, there has been a great increase in the use of vaping, a 78% increase among high school students and 48% increase with middle school students. So I really commend Jeanette Davison in getting ahead of this and bringing this program to the community. I hope to see a lot of people there. <clears throat> what was that? I'm sorry. It's the E6. I have, there's um, more oh, flyers right. out there, yeah. yeah. It's also on the side. Yeah. yeah. On the um, street. <clears throat> oh, and Santa, too, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mr. Frey? Yes. Uh, I was actually talking to Kathy outside of this meeting about the recycling. Uh, about the recycling. She, uh, the recycling meeting she had attended, and the way I understand it, the recycling model is broken just because the recyclables are worth less and it costs more to deal with them. And she was even saying that in the future we're going to have to, they're only going to accept clean, dry recyclables, which That's correct. sounds a little wild to me when I put the garbage out every morning. <laughs> um, that being said, um, Happy Halloween to everybody. I know it's quite belated, but some people in Ringwood had over 300 trick-or-treaters, I hear. I just wanted to mention that. The lady, the, the area of the lady streets was extremely popular to go trick-or-treating this year. I know it had been ramping up in past years, but wow. I saw some pictures. I wasn't there, but I, my kids experienced heavy-handed candy grabs because the other areas of town didn't have that many trick-or-treaters. Anyway, uh, happy Thanksgiving to all, another holiday that passed, and uh, I was thankful to be able to uh, attend a tour of our Superfund site uh, over the last month, uh, which proved to be interesting. Um, I had never been beyond the gate. Um, it wasn't very exciting, uh, although it was exciting meeting all the people that we met uh, and seeing all the crowd, you know, all the people that were very interested in being there. Um, it was basically just this overgrown area with raised gravel roads. Uh, most of the area seemed to be wetlands. Uh, we got to see a mine. That mine really kind of looked like a small pond. Um, I say this because I was curious. I, I assume other people are curious what it looks like beyond the fence. Um, we did see a stream flowing with colored water. Uh, it was like orange looking. I can't tell you that it was de definitely because of the toxic waste there. Uh, it may very well have been naturally occurring. I have no idea. Uh, but it was disturbing to see. Uh, you know, being in there and seeing that. I definitely smelled wild smells while being in there. And um, you know, it was just generally uh, kind of a, a wild vibe being in there. Hearing the stories from Wayne Mann and the other people who spoke, Vivian and um, Chief Mann, uh, you know, it's always disturbing hearing that stuff. And um, I don't know, I feel like those people have just always kind of been dealt the small end of the stick, so to speak. Uh, and so anyway, it was impactful being in there. And uh, again, I'm thankful for getting the opportunity. Um, that said, there are two mines. We saw one of them, right? Both of these mines go deep, more than a 1,000 feet deep. Uh, and they're filled with toxic water and or paint sludge. Um, I've learned that it's, it would be very difficult, as people say, full cleanup. What's this full cleanup language? You know, it's impossible. And it's true, it's disappointing when you hear, like, it's pretty much impossible to clean out the mines. You can't just go clean them out. You know, we're going to try to pump and treat the water. We talk about this. Like, uh, Tom Conway uh, mentioned tonight and has before talked about how the most toxic part of that situation is likely the mines. We need to deal with it properly. It's one of the reasons I ran to be on this council. Uh, that said, we have two mines and a landfill, which is profoundly different. It's not a deep mine filled with water. This is toxic waste that we can touch and remove. You know, maybe they covered it over with dirt or mixed it up a little bit. Uh, some people say there's 10,000, not pounds. I've never even seen a pound of toxic waste, like just sitting here. I had some in a jar once. Now we have tons that are reachable. In fact, we have thousands of tons of toxic waste, reachable, able to be cleaned out, that this council could make a decision to have removed. Somebody says 106,000 tons of dirt that's laden with toxic waste. I, I, the estimate I thought was 80,000 tons of soil we may get that's clean enough to put into one of the mines as extra fill as we capped at. 
These are all estimates. We know there's toxic waste there. I feel very strongly that we should revert to 5A and excavate this. Who else is going to fight for the health of the people of this town other than the people in charge of the town? The people in charge of the insurance company are interested in their insurance company not paying out. The people in charge of Ford are obviously not interested in paying the high dollar excavation cost. So I'd like to make a motion that we do the right thing and revert to 5A excavation. Can I'll I get a second? I'll second that. Oh, hold on a second. We have to get another sheet. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Resolution number two. Yeah, 214. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on resolution 2018-214 uh, for the borough, uh, borough of Ringwood to request to revert to 5A. Uh, 5A being uh, the designation of the uh, full removal at the O'Connor disposal area has uh, highlighted, I think, in the proposed plan, which was September 2013. Came in, that came out. Um, you have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? Can we? Um, what's your, what's your, um, what's your, what's your outline on Painford? I don't have an outline on Painford, and I would I would discuss our plan forward in executive session. I'm not interested in talking about legalese in the public. Oh. Fight, fight for the right of our residents to be healthy. Okay, without knowing plan. any details <coughs> on how, okay. how he wants to pay for it, it's, <laughs> it's not a resolution uh, worth uh, voting. Uh, Mr. Bolton, you had a comment? Mr. Bolton. Uh, sorry, I wasn't sure if it was uh, just sort of as you described, or was there um, a resolution in writing to be read into the record? Uh, no, the resolution was just as uh, Mr. Ferretti uh, stated that uh, the Borough Council should uh, pursue Remedy 5A with regards to O'Connor Disposal Area. Okay. Anything? You can't, you can't jump in and out of the conversation if you don't have the visual cues, bro. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's you're why at, I was like, wait at, a minute. You're at, you're at a disadvantage. <laughs> And it's a little harder. Um, um, that's a terrible idea. Um, the situation at the O'Connor disposal area is not like the situation in the mines. Um, uh, in the mines, uh, particularly the Peters mine, uh, Ford uh, did a lot of dumping. Um, at the O'Connor disposal area, um, uh, a lot of people did a lot of dumping. Uh, there was a lot of what they term municipal waste. Uh, it might not be actually generated by the town, um, but we might be responsible for it. Might is a very strong might. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, we are, because we've seen this uh, go out one, one time. Uh, there was sludge removal area six called Sludge Hill, had a whole bunch of garbage tied in with uh, with paint waste uh, and the EPA and the DEP allowed uh, Ford's contractors to separate out the sludge and then left what was left out you know, that, that, that stuff was mingled in with the sludge they left that for the borough of Ringwood to take care of okay that became our problem uh, we were able to get rid of a bunch of the heavy metals uh, the state of New Jersey came in and removed six hundred and seventy thousand dollars worth of other miscellaneous solid waste there's still a bill uh, for the for for the borough of Ringwood in the amount of about six hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars down at the uh, project manager, the NJDEP project manager's desk. Uh, hopefully that uh, that's never going to come up here. Um, but but in the eyes of the EPA and the DEP, the borough would be responsible for it. Um, uh, we still do need a recycling center there is going to need to be a place for uh, the, the removal of woody waste and, uh, and, and, and compost piles, leaves. Uh, these things are regulated by the state. Uh, our, our current site isn't quite up to the, to the standards that it should be, 
But more importantly than a recycling center, we need a cap on O'Connor disposal area. Generations ago, this was not some pristine Garden of Eden. This was called the slime pit. This is where they took the waste after they broke down the rock and they took all the waste and put it into there because it was a low-lying wetlands area. They built up a dam full of mine tailings and they kept on dumping their wastewater into it and let that evaporate. This was not some kind of charming playground with bunnies frolicking and stuff. This was a mess. And then they went in and they started throwing garbage on top of that stuff. Uh, and then they threw sludge on top of that garbage and intermingled it into a beautiful parfait of nonsense that we do not need to clean up because EPA has studied the issue pretty in detail and they tell us that it represents no threat. Um, you were at this, um, at this walk through at the, at, the, at the Superfund site. Mr. Ferretti, tell me, three, three people spoke. They all said the same thing. The borough is responsible. The borough should be held accountable. What do you think that means? What does that mean? How, do you, how, how does that actually come into operation? How do we get to be accountable? What does that mean? <clears throat> if the borough is responsible and the borough is accountable, <clears throat> Why would you think the insurance companies will jump in and pay that bill if the borough's responsible? That's ridiculous. Um, and we could defend that, right, that it's ridiculous and that we're not responsible. The polluter's responsible and the insurance companies can help to protect us. That's their job. Okay. No. You, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I thought I might have interrupted you. Well, I'm just saying that what we heard up there is that they don't want a recycle oh. center. A recycling center doesn't make much sense. And the EPA recommended a full cleanup before we came up with the idea of a recycling center. If the recycling center no longer makes sense, it makes sense to revert back to the original recommendation. Okay, nonsense. Okay, okay. Um, we need a cap. Okay, a recycling center is a way to get a cap. We need a cap. No. We need a cap because if we start to disturb that material, we're going to be responsible for removing it. Our insurance companies, now, if you might have gone through and read one of these um, unilateral uh, administrative orders where they tell the borough of Ringwood that Ringwood, you are the polluter, okay? They, and they go out through chapter and verse of what we did back in the day, okay, that, that makes us be considered the polluter. And whether or not our, our, our defense is all based on what happened in 1967-68. Tell me something. Who knows what happened back then? Who knows it well enough to know that we're going to be able to protect the taxpayer? Because the bill's like, there's like, what, 30-something million dollars for a full cleanup, 5A? 32? 34. Something like that. 30 for something like that. It's a, it's a good number. Uh, it was um, four, four, five, six, seven years ago. Um, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, it might be, it might have changed by now. Um, and what is the projected cost of running a recycling center? We're and, running a recycling center now. Well, a brand new one, building one. It might running be more efficient. It, and now they're becoming more human activity needs to be done in a recycling center. Um, so you're going to need more human labor. You, you are mixing up things. Selecting we do not, is too different. We do not, yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not processing this material. We are taking commingled to a place to a recycling plant and where they recycle it. Right. Um, that, that's what we that's what we do. So we don't do any kind of processing. We don't we 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 we're, we're sending it to to a place to be processed. All right. So don't don't intermingle gonna, these things. But if we're, we're, it's a drop off center. Is so what my it is. question is, if the it has to be clean and dry, are we going to be cleaning and drying it before we send it off to these places? If if the recycling people who buy the recycling materials or accept the recycling mm -hmm. materials. Tell us that it has to be that way. Right. It will have to be that way. Right. It'll have to be that way whether we're doing it on one side of Peters Mine Road or the other side of the street. We're still going to have to do that. That's not going to change. Investing in a recycling center doesn't make any sense given the we need a cap. economic situation. We need a cap. Well, then maybe you should be more inventive on what you had selected because at this point what you selected doesn't make economically any sense. Oh no! A cap is a cap is the most important thing we can do. No, okay. Removal is removal. Removal. I would like Ringwood to be a safe place for my grandkids to live. Mm -hmm. If it's a safe place that's expensive, so be it. But if it's a, it's not safe and it's cheap, how great would that be? Mm -hmm. Now I'm being, you know, clearly I'm not serious about that. I would like it to be safe, and if that means it's expensive, 
Maybe that's the case, but it's going to be safe. Okay. Number one. So if there's toxic waste in this slime area, we're going to remove that. If that's a possibility, we'll put it somewhere where it was more meant to be, as opposed to where the stream that looks different colors runs eventually into the reservoir. Never mind our residents, the other four million people. Yeah. I have some kind of moral obligation because I'm here making decisions for this town that houses that. It's not okay. It's unacceptable. It's morally unacceptable, unacceptable to me. You have a moral obligation to take money away from our residents to dig a hole no. that, that nobody tells you no, no, nobody is willing. No, nobody is willing to say this material should be removed. Nobody has said that. Oh, the nonsense! The cute little thing where uh, the EPA wanted to remove it until we said this. Um, the EPA knows darn well that they can't ask for that stuff to be removed. They were they 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 were told by their own people in the National Remedy Review Board. Hey, why are you doing this? It, it should make sense. It should it it should it 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 should bother your conscience to, for them to say, wait a second, the same material is in O'Connor, is in Peter's mine and Cannon mine. And we can, we have to remove this. Oh my God, this is a moral obligation to remove this. And that stuff can stay. Well, how does that make sense? No, none of this stuff represents a threat. They've studied this. They've, they, they, they've studied this. They've had people over their shoulder looking at it. Everybody's looking at it. They're very sensitive right now because they blew the first, time, first cleanup through so, so, so horribly that they are saying that there is no threat. I know that in my house, my house was you know, built in circa 1970. Two families have lived there, raised their children, and moved on out and never had to worry about this stuff. I never have to worry about this stuff because it's not impacting our water system. That stuff is not moving. Um, that, that, that stuff is not getting into the water system, it's not getting to the reservoir. Those four million people who you morally feel necessary to take Ringwood taxpayer money to protect those four million people have no interest in, in sending any of their money up to fix this problem. Nobody seems to care, only, only you. You, you, you. You have this moral responsibility to take other people's money, our residents' money, to dig a hole. It makes no sense. We're, we are not in public session right now. Oh, you were talking back and forth with everybody else before. Currently, the deal is 85% on Ford, 15% on us. Yes. The 15% on us seems as though it's going to be picked up by the insurance company. That, 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 is, that is the way we structured the on term these, sheets. On the these reason, and the least expensive options. What's that? On the least expensive options yes. for each particular site of yes. the Superfund site. That's yes. what I'm saying. We should fight to not take the least expensive option. We should fight to take the safest option. Removal is cl clearly safer than covering over. And it's a permanent solution. It is. Instead of a cap that can fail in 30 years. Um, I did go to college, not as a scientist, mm -hmm. but as an I studied environmental studies. Okay? Like, I'm not in there taking the tests, mm -hmm. but I do understand that removing it versus covering up is a more long-term, safer idea. Okay. Fantastic. Tell me something. What happens when that cap uh, fails? What happens when the cap fails? When the cap fails, what happens? What what happens? The cap. No, well, no, but, but I mean, what happens environmentally? What is what what is the fear of that cap failing? Well, what is the point of a cap? Uh, good, good. Go go with me. R run with that decision. So it's run with supposed that to idea. protect the people. So if it fails, then it, the people are no longer protected. Oh, okay. Um, the yeah, cap. we're never going to see eye to eye. That makes sense. Why don't we just take a vote? Take a because, vote. because I want to point out a couple more things. We could be um, here all night. Yeah, we're going to be here all night. We're going to be here all next year, oh, too. Well, then I'll get uh, yeah, enjoy yourself. Um, a cap. A cap. You are a cap. Out of there. But we're not, we're not open to public. I'm not, I'm not interested in hearing it. Yeah, thank you. Um, a cap. And if a cap should fail, it does nothing. These three sites have existed out there now for 50 years without a cap. Without a cap. And for 50 years without a cap, they do not represent any kind of threat to anybody or the water supply without a cap. Now we're going to put a cap on it. We'll throw two, uh, two, two feet of clean dirt over the top of it. That way, no humans can actually touch it. They'll, they'll rearrange that material and try to compact it and then, and, then, and then put a cap over it so people can't touch the stuff. 
It's still not going to affect your water. If that cap should break down, somehow dirt breaks in 30 years or something, it won't matter because it's not going to affect the water. You can cover it over more dirt and people can't touch it and we're, we move on. This site has existed without these caps. These caps are simply to prevent people from being able to touch this stuff. If we put a recycling center over the top of that cap, we're better off than anything. The reason that the EPA um, stated that they wanted a full removal at O'Connor, they wanted 5A, was so that trespassers can ride uh, ATVs over borough property um, and they, won't, uh, they wouldn't disrupt a cap. A cap would be disrupted by trespassing ATV riders. Um, Walter Mugden himself said uh, that was a bit of a stretch, was his comment. It was a bit of a stretch that, that they can actually get somebody to go along with that. Ford certainly wouldn't go along with that. We can't go along with that because our taxpayer dollars are at risk. Our taxpayers are the ones who, who are backing all this up. Our, 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 our moral conceit that we have to do the right thing here, the, the taxpayers are the ones who are on the hook. It's, it's very clear. It's clear in, the, in the, the administrative orders that we've been received. It's clear. It's been clear for, for years. Uh, if we go down this road, our taxpayers are in threat. The, 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 the idea of economic development is, is pales in comparison to dropping $30 million for a hole that helps nobody. Uh, but we do have a motion in a second on resolution 2014-214 2018-214. Who was the second? Uh, the second was Ms. O'Keefe. Mr. Ferretti made the motion. Uh, Mr. Bolton, you're still with us? I'm still here. Great, very good. We're going to go with a roll call, so you're up first. Roll call, please. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? No. Council Members Noonan? No. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear. No. <clears throat> Hearing that that motion did not pass, I still do not feel that a recycling center is the right thing for that site if and when we were to cap it. I think Ringwood would benefit greatly by having a public meeting place. I think we should have a place known as the Teen and Senior Center, a place where many groups could potentially meet, but would be focused on teens and seniors. Peop uh, this is the kind of place uh, where people could meet, whether it's, a real, whether it's uh, an insured group or it's a, a place where teens just come to enjoy Wi-Fi and each other's company. And uh, it may very well have something like a bocce court or other facilities that we could fit into the plan and uh, it'd be something that people get I feel something like that in this town to raise the home values and it'd be something people could look forward to using and getting together on, uh, you know, on a bipartisan basis that we should, uh, I would like to make a motion to look into putting a teen center there instead of a recycling center. I would like to see a task force taken up to find out what's best for this community, but I would second your motion to come up with an alternative to a recycling center that doesn't make economic sense for this community. I think it's a, not a wise investment any longer and that an alternative should be sought. Uh, do we have a resolution? Is, is there a resolution being, being brought, being, being put on the table? Or is that just Should we chatter? do a resolution to look for an alternative to a recycling center, something that makes more economic sense for the community, such as a community center. I'd like to get um, a task force from yeah, the community. I'm sorry, my other it. idea was potentially the turf field at that location. I don't know if this is crazy, but turf field also has a similar life expectancy to a cap, I believe. Uh, anyway, yeah, so motion to investigate other, uh, other options other, other for O'Connor. That are more economically viable and beneficial to the community. Agreed. I'll second that. Okay. So there's a resolution 2018-215 offered by Mr. Ferretti, seconded by Ms. O'Keefe. Uh, looking to state that again for me, please. Just Investigate. For the sure, sorry. Yeah, slowly, yes.
to establish a task force to, what was the? Oh, uh, yeah? Establish a task force to investigate. A better alternative. Alternative options for future, I'm sorry, for future land use. Of the O'Connor Disposal Area. Of OCDA. Um, okay, any, uh, we have a motion to second. Any comments? I'll go first. Um, we are, uh, uh, we are seriously, uh, messing around with fire at this point. Um, there, the, uh, recycling center is being paid for by Ford. So it's not that much of an investment in our part, uh, since the recycling center is being primarily paid for by Ford. Um, uh, to try to change the use now uh, would maybe possibly in the EPA's eyes uh, be changing the, uh, the final, con final configuration of what's going on out there and might be in violation of uh, that uh, explanation of significant differences that was out uh, that, 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 changed the, uh, that changed the plan to, uh, to a cap at O'Connor. Uh, I don't think this would go anywhere. I am baffled uh, that you tell me that safety absolutely requires and that we have a moral obligation to remove this stuff, but if not, let's have some kids play on top of it. And I get lost somewhere in the, in, in the, in the mix there. Is it really bad or not? I'm not quite clear. Um, but uh, I think we can, uh, we can go for a vote. Anybody else have any, any ideas on this? Yeah, I think that was Rob Freddy's point, that you wouldn't put kids playing on top of it even if it was capped, because just because you're capping it doesn't make it safe in any regard. Removing it is the best alternative to keep this community safe today and into the future. The people that live there have been sickened. They've been dying early. There are so many cancer-related deaths in that community. To hear the stories of how they've suffered was heartbreaking when we took that tour. To think that we would just leave it there and knowing that they do not want a recycling center, they reiterated that time and time again during the tour. And then we find out that a recycling center makes no economic sense for this community. So we're going to just move forward and put a recycling center on top of this in spite of the fact that the community is opposed to one and it doesn't benefit the greater community to have one. So the idea of building a recycling center just maybe it was a good time good idea at the time it isn't a good idea today so therefore we would like to look for alternatives i suggested a solar farm a year ago that we look into it i've never heard anybody come with any proposal that said it couldn't be done or it could be done there was a KDC never came out to look at the property as far as I know. So alternatives weren't explored and probably should have been as we know that the recycling center was situation was getting worse as years went by and now it's dire. So why put a recycling center, all that money, $5 million into a recycling center? It's just like throwing it away. We have a recycling center. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't know where $5 million comes from. Well, how much is your recycling center going to be costing that Ford is building? Uh, maybe a million, million and a half, something along those lines. Ford okay. appears to cost. A couple of million. Does it make yeah. sense? It's Ford. Ford's, Ford is, is paying for it. One point of clarification, Mayor. KDC never returned any phone calls. And the information that I got back from any other vendors said that that was not a viable site for solar. But keep in mind that if in fact you choose to do away with the recycling center on top of O'Connor disposal area, you will not have a recycling center because the state of New Jersey and, and EPA has required it across the street as part of mitigation be reclaimed. So if in fact you make that decision, the, the money that you spent in the garbage contract picking up leaves that get dumped up at the recycling center to be ground up for soils and mulch and whatever has no place to go. So the sixty, seventy thousand dollars or whatever it was that you guys approved 
at that meeting, we will have to now physically pay more to get that someplace else because the recycling center in its existing location is part of the uh, reclamation plan and will not be there anymore. So just no. keep, while you're doing that, keep that in mind. Not true. That is absolutely true. Don't, don't. Uh, so we have uh, establishing a task force. That is uh, our resolution 2018-214. Oh, offered by 15. Mr. Ferretti. 215. Right? 215, 215, correct. And, and oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Offered by Mr. Ferretti, seconded by Ms. O'Keefe. Mm -hmm. uh, any further discussion? <clears throat> quick quick clarification. Mm -hmm. This would this would just be to come up with alternatives and advise the council. This is not um, a decision board or anything like that. No. no. And I would put a limit on on the so-called task force. Did, did I hear right saying um, to, to clarify that it's a, a voluntary task force? Well, who do we consider? Who, what, what are we thinking? Is this the, these, these are, you know, uh, members of the public? Is this a... Uh, 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 a subcommittee of the council. What are we thinking for membership of this? I think members of the public should be involved. Do you agree? Perhaps the chamber, business, and also the council. Yes. Maybe a public meeting. Well, let's. If we're going to do a resolution, you know, maybe we could take it up next month uh, and actually clarify exactly what we want to do. You know, a public meeting and a task force, it's, we're, we're, we're pretty right. far. I'm, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm much better off with a public hearing than, than I am with a, uh, uh, with a task force. Um, do we want to, uh, do we want to proceed on a vote on this 2018-215 or do we, do we just meeting. address this next month? It's you know, 10 to 11. We'll have clear minds. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll take it. Anything. Okay, so we'll do we'll we'll go to the next month with that. Okay. Ms. Fern, anything else? Happy holidays. Uh, Councilman Noonan. Yeah, finally got there, huh, bro? <laughs> <laughs> and it's late. Yes it is. Uh, we talked about tabling the Economic Development Committee appointments the next, to the next month, but don't we have a reorg in about six weeks in early January where we make those appointments anyway? So should we take time in the December meeting when we're trying to clean up the year-end stuff when January, whatever, the first week of January, we're required to make these appointments anyway? Um, like... Uh, Mr. Martucci said earlier, and he made an allusion to the legislatures in uh, Trenton are desperate. Yes, they are desperate to the point where they're, they wouldn't even waive the fees for our high school students to go up and take their pictures and bring a photographer, which is an actual travesty of the people down in Trenton. Um, as far as the recycling situation, yes, there is no market worldwide for the uh, material right now. But there is technology that is being developed because when you have a glut of materials that you can get very cheap, other industries step up and they try to use ways to uh, sort and process that material with technology as opposed to uh, human interaction. Uh, Mr. Heck, uh, great job on a snowstorm. I was another one that took hours and hours to get home just from Mawa. And it's a late night, so that's it. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Noon. Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, I got one thing that's less exciting than everything else. Uh, leaves. If you live in the lake community, the lake isn't the place to blow your leaves. We have thousands of trees that are already dumping leaves. Uh, yet you see people blowing the leaves into the lake. I see people blowing leaves on people's property. I see people blowing leaves into the street. Um, it's just common, common courtesy. 
and it's environmentally um, uh, damaging to the lakes because ultimately it just fills up the lakes. But yeah, you know, like drive around the area and you see somebody in the middle of the street with a leaf blower, and then they find they almost get hit by a car. So, but that's all I get. Thank you, Ms. Mortucci. Uh, one one further comment: the term sheets. The term sheets, uh, there are term sheets between the Borough of Ringwood and, and Ford Motor Company. There are term sheets between the Borough of Ringwood and the insurance companies. What all these things do is protect the taxpayer. It limits the liability of the taxpayer to have to pay for what's going to go on in Upper Ringwood uh, at the Superfund site. Um, uh, it uh, it took, uh, took well over a year, a couple years, to negotiate those things. Uh, to say that we agreed with all of Ford's demands is ridiculous. Ford, uh, there, um, uh, they also relinquished the, the, the ability to be able to sue us for past costs. Uh, you'll see that there's uh, uh, part of the unilateral orders that we were required to comply with by the EPA that came down from that, from that EPA judge. Um, we were required to take part financially in the uh, investigation part of that cleanup uh, that's going on now. Uh, Ford had, had, had asked EPA to fine us $16 million. They did that back in 2006, 2007 era. Uh, by the time we got to 2010, 2011, they were asking for $30 million uh, that EPA should, should, should require from, from the borough of Ringwood and the borough of Ringwood is it, that that was part of the the administrative order said that we were fined somewhere between thirty two thousand five hundred dollars a day to thirty seven five would be the day if we do not comply with this uh, with this order. Uh, the only responsible thing we could do at the time was to try to come to a deal, uh, and we came to a great deal for the for for the taxpayers of Ringwood. Um, now that. Now that it seems that that immediate peril is over, uh, some folks want to try to renegotiate that. I think that they will find that the Ford Motor Company does not suffer uh, from, from, from these moral pangs, and they would be happy to kill us, absolutely kill us. Um, our budget, our annual budget is, is a rounding error in their legal budget. And then you have the EPA. Uh, and the EPA is really just an assortment of a few hundred geologists and uh, maybe a couple thousand lawyers, and this is what they do. And they consider us to be a, uh, a polluter. Um, and some of them, are, I don't think that there's general uh, joy in EPA world that the borough got off without really getting banged up pretty bad here. I think we did very good. And I don't think we should be uh, looking at trying to renegotiate these deals at any, at, uh, at any time. What we need to do is move forward, get this in, behind Ringwood. Um, so that's, that's, that's about the term sheets. The term sheets, uh, I think, is the greatest thing that happened in this town in my tenure. Um, a teen center and a senior center. Okay. Uh, we, we just heard uh, our, our, uh, our solid waste removal budget, that's going up, uh, what was that, about $140,000 or so, that's going up next year, we have that. Um, uh, we'll still be paying off uh, the tax appeals for the uh, North Jersey District Water Supply Commission, that's going to hit our budget next year. Our water budget's going to be in terrible shape because we didn't sell a lot of water. We might have to look at, at raising our water rates. That's going to be a bad idea. Um, our, uh, our state aid will be going down uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at our schools. Uh, that might trigger a tax increase from them. Uh, our Lakeland's uh, state aid is going down. That might trigger uh, a tax increase from them. Uh, we have a lot of problems to try to add new infrastructure as much as I would love to. Uh, it does not seem to make sense right now. Uh, 
it's uh, it, it, it's not a serious thought, especially when we want to do that and risk uh, going to court with Ford Motor Company, with three insurance companies, um, and with the EPA, and maybe the DEP in, in, in a trailing position. And we're going to go to court with all these people, trying to defend ourselves from actions the borough took in 1968. Um, we have to... Uh, I think we I think we gotta do better. I think we got I think we gotta really focus on the problems we have at hand. We have great problems that we're trying to deal with and trying to keep this town affordable. And and the the direction I'm hearing uh, does not sound like we're at any interest at all in, in, in trying to do these type of sensible uh, movements. <coughs> Mayor Spear? Yes, sir. We have talked about over the last seven, eight, nine years coming up with some sort of a center. Yes. Okay. Where for the seniors and maybe slash teens. Okay. The idea was hopefully use an existing building. At one point was building a center. Uh, I think trying to use open space funds. So the topic has come up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would suggest applying for grants and looking for alternate little, funding for something like that. Meanwhile. If it's if it's a free future land use that just that the EPA would justify capping with, why wouldn't Ford be willing to pay for that? Just like they're going to pay for the recycling center. I don't know. These fields cost one and a quarter, one and a half million dollars. We've talked about it before. I don't know how much a teen center would cost. I can't imagine it'd be more than two million dollars. Maybe it would. But at least it would be something useful for the town. We already have a recycling center. I understand that would be an issue if that's uh, the recycling center would be needs to turn into natural woods or something. That needs to be addressed, but uh, I don't know. I see there being a multitude of better options than a new recycling center at this point in time. Uh, so I think it's a smart move to move forward and in investigating other options, options that would potentially be paid for by Ford or another source other than the taxpayers, like the grants we investigated for the uh, for the turf field so far. Okay. Um. We lost a great opportunity to do a possible teen center and teen and or senior, senior center with Hewitt. In an era of declining student populations, what did we do? We put a modern looking addition for 15 plus million dollars on one of the oldest buildings that doesn't even match and we could have put a field right there alongside of it at the same time yeah. and we lost that opportunity. Agreed. And that went out to a, that went out to a uh, referendum vote. And only the people that were interested in came out and voted for it. And now we have a declining student population greatly. Mm -hmm. And now we have a school that we're going to be paying off for another 25 years. It's going to be underutilized. Thank you. Agreed. Okay, I think we're done. Uh, take motion, motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Noonan. Second. Thank you, Mr. Ferretti. Roll call on German. Council members Bolton. Yes. Thank you, Ryan. Ferretti? <laughs> yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. 11 o'clock on the schnoz. All right, Bolton, there we out. Have Thanks a good very much, everybody. Have a good night. Have a good night, man. You too.